You are listening to the Savage Fincast, episode 99, 10 Toes. Chicago. <laughs> This is the Savage Fincast, the show that's feeling a bit oozy. My name is Jim Purcell. I'm Craig Olson. And I'm just the party dude. Yeah, <laughs> Raven we, Perez. He, he's got a lot of energy, that Raven Perez. He, he's, he's a total Mikey. He's definitely the Mikey of the group. Personally, I do machines. <laughs> and that would, uh, Craig, Craig, is that maybe you just Donnie? Or, uh, or wait, does that leave you as uh, Craig's, Leo? Craig's responsible, so he's definitely the Leo of this troop. He okay. is, dude. He is a Leo. Unfun guy, that's what you're basically saying. Cool. All right. That's cool. <laughs> Whatever. Sure. I'll play this little game. <laughs> Guys, I think we got one shell of an episode. <laughs> Grown. <laughs> but, like, no joke. This is some beefy fucking... This is going to be a beefy we boy. Got this is going to be a lot. a lot to get through. Uh, we have a lot of things to talk about. And But before we even get started, because, again, this is going to be our... What is probably more than likely going to be our final Ninja Turtles uh, focused episode. Uh, you know, we, we, we had intended to do the Ninja Turtle issues as they came out with the Savage Dragon issues. But, you know, things happen the way they do and we got behind because Savage Dragon got behind. And so we've decided to do these catch up episodes instead. Uh, you know, it's not ideal, but, you know, we're going to get through them. These matter. Yeah. Yeah. I'm ex- I'm excited about this uh, episode because this wraps up the Urban Legends with the three final issues, which is all brand new stuff. Right. And for old heads like me that collected it originally, this is all new to me. Plus, I think we're going to talk about the 30th anniversary special from IDW for Ninja Turtles, which had like a seven-page quick story mm-hmm. uh, f- uh, that focused on the Volume 3 series. And we're going to talk about the fan-made conclusions before Urban Legends came out, which, you know, fans just wanted to conclude the series and made their own uh, couple of issues, which are pretty pretty neat to kind of look at. So we, we've got definitely, like you said, we've got a lot to talk about, but it's it's real exciting, I, I think. You know, I had a oh, lot of yeah. fun with this, and, and it was fun talking to you guys about this who hadn't experienced it the first oh, time. Oh, yeah. Totally agree. Like, uh Guys, I couldn't have asked for a better reading experience on this Turtles run because, not going to lie, I might not have made it all the way through. And now I fucking love it, and I'm super-duper fucking happy. And uh, it was just awesome getting to, like, you know, have these deep dives with you guys because it really, like, sort of, like, flipped the script on how I was thinking of this series. So, very good. This is going to be a good-ass show. Cool. I think we should jump right into it then to, to keep it moving. We'll start off with some news. Yes, please. So, um, Savage Dragon 252 sold out, uh, and we're going to be getting a second printing. So this for, the, is the for, sec- the, for those okay. keeping track at home, that's two sellouts and three issues. Yes! That's pretty awesome. It's, it's, it's good to hear that stuff with Savage Dragon. Yeah, dude. So we're getting a new cover. This is 252 is the experimental issue with uh, the Sunday Funnies. Uh, the cover is a throwback to a Peanuts kind of a collection cover. So it's it's an all red cover. Appar- it's almost, apparently, it's an older collected edition. Uh, it almost it looks pretty like a little paperback. Yeah, a little thing. yeah, a little paperback. A lot of people had when they were kids, I guess. Um, yeah. It looks very similar to the cover. In fact, um, I gotta say the uh, this new uh, this new cover is very cool, but I think it looks a little bit too close to the original, to, in my opinion. Yeah. So basically, it's got a, a Charlie Brown and Lucy looking characters that are <laughs> kind of like the Dragon Kids. Well, it says in huge letters, "Good grief, Savage Dragon," which. <laughs> right. So I guess it, it's really old school. I, I guess it's supposed to be Amy and Jack. Yeah, I don't yeah. think it really. I think he just it's like fins on peanuts. Yeah, that's kind of what it looks like. Pretty although, much. Although I don't think Lucy has freckles like that. Right. It's kind of simple, but it's if you'd seen the cover, you could tell immediately it's it's a throwback. Um, I will I will say it's worth looking up that cover. I think it will make you appreciate the variant more. Right. Right. 
Um, I think the big story on this news article is that it's going to a second printing, which is pretty exciting that people took notice. Um, oh, yeah. Which doesn't always happen with Savage Dragon. And, I, you know, I really think that Eric busted his ass on this and, and did such a good job um, that it deserves the recognition. So I was really worried stuff. about this issue when certain news websites accidentally spoiled <laughs> 80% of this issue like a month before it came out. Even mm-hmm. it, before issue two fifty one had come out, yeah, it was a disaster. <laughs> yeah, but it just seemed to fly under the radar. Thank God, dude. I would have been I, so I, hard. I think people that aren't familiar with it probably didn't realize that a lot of the issue was spoiled either. You know, it's hard to tell unless you're in the know. True. So who knows? But I think we should move on to the next item oh, since we we got a lot okay. to cover. Got to keep it brisk. This one. <laughs> Well, the other bit of news is that Eric announced a new um, alternate cover for issue 253. Uh, in the tradition of his other uh, election year covers, uh, Eric has put out a Joe Biden, Kamala Harris, uh, I, I uh, endorse cover with Malcolm Dragon mm-hmm. endorsing the the Democratic candidates for president and vice president. It's an okay cover. It, you know, it's fine. It's super similar to the Obama cover. Very similar. Right. Just posing together. It's personally sure. nothing that I'm going to go out of my way to get. And, you know, of course, the internet it's melted down over it because... Oh, tears. It's... The crocodile tears were amazing. Worth it for that alone. It's hard to say how many fans that have never read Savage Dragon that will now never read Savage Dragon <laughs> over well, appar- this cover. Apparently, he said that cover was... He, I think he just posted today that the cover sold or at least got more orders than the normal cover. Huh. <laughs> okay. So yeah. he also announced it fairly late. I think, Raven, you had told me before this episode started that uh, orders for 253 hit cutoff had already come and gone. Yeah, they. Uh, I contacted my shop. Uh, I, I, he told me a day too late. And uh, he said, don't worry. We know you wanted it. We got extras. But, uh, yeah, it's it's... Too late now. They're sold out, I guess, yeah. or back ordered. They're yeah. back ordered. Right. So you got to back order it if you want to get it, and you won't necessarily right. get it on release day if you sure. missed the boat. Hey, man, feelings on it? I think he nailed the likenesses. He got Joe better than Kamala. Yeah. But Kamala's kind of like, you know, whatevs. Um, but I think they're both good. There was a slight addendum to this. Uh, Eagle Eye Mark Welzer said that the anatomy was adjusted. I didn't notice it whatever not important uh i'm just saying that think about the implications if joe loses it'll be kind of a historic cover just for fun just to have around but if joe wins it'll be like savage dragon who who said i'm stealing someone's comment but eric larson the (laughs) kingmaker well it's true eric hasn't been wrong yet give it time George Bush did get whacked, bushwhacked. It's funny. He didn't do one for Hillary. Nope, he didn't. Nope. Didn't endorse That's it. how you know this is important to him. Yeah, yeah man. Yeah. It's a pivotal moment. Yeah. It's a pivotal moment in our country's history. I think we got to move along, though. This is a packed-ass show. I'm um, excited for this next news story. I can't wait for this. Go kick this one off. I can't yeah. wait. The cover is amazing. Absolutely. So, uh, as we know, Eric Larson, uh, best covers in the biz, uh, dropped the new hotness on us with 256's cover. And guys, it's delicious. Let me paint you a word picture so that your mind theater has a masterpiece, a cinematic masterpiece. Essentially, we have a very awesome rendering of Malcolm. You know, it's kind of a cool style that Eric's using. He's It's from the perspective of inside a mouth. And you just see rows of jagged teeth enclosing him. And we get word balloons on the cover, which I love. Because you're letting Farron Delgado shine right on that cover. And he's saying, you, you're supposed to be dead. So good, dudes. So, fuck yeah. And... Immediately, everyone screamed Mako, but I got to say, I heard some pretty interesting alternate theories out there. I got an alternate theory. Yeah, I'll lay it on us. It's Basculus Dick. That's the theory. <laughs> it had a very toothy mouth in this configuration, yeah. more so than Mako. It, that's the interesting thing. I thought you were, it was, it was actually your take that I was like, whoa, dude. 
I was like, I never would have thought of Basilisk's cock. Never. Um, but then keeping it rolling, you know, when we say Mako, like, it could be, is this Paul Dragon Mako? Right. Is this regular Mako? Our yeah. own our own fincasts. Craig Olson did a uh, f- a pretty sweet Photoshop job. What if this is open face, a clone? No, of, first of all, I didn't say it's open face. I doubt it's open face. Yeah, Somebody he, else did. He, he did a bad <laughs> edit to show what open face might look like on the cover, which is the sideways. Right. But what bad if edit? Is... You couldn't even just say edit. You had to add bad edit in. Jeez. <laughs> Wait, did I say bad edit? You did. I thought it was a good edit. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought, he I said bad edit. I'm sorry. I thought out loud. <laughs> he said the quiet part loud wow, and the loud man. part quiet. Oh, I thought I, it was I, a good I, edit. I guess I meant funny. to say dirty. Uh, <laughs> quick and sure. dirty. Okay, edit. we're gonna we're gonna move on. No. Yeah, yeah. Hurtful, hurtful. Um, I think no. I think it's Mako. I think it's Mako from Paul Dragon's uh, universe because he was a good guy there, and I think that's a great way to bring back an awesome character that people love. And mm-hmm. Mako, in the original series, if you guys remember, was a good guy for right. a few issues, uh, and it was fun. I think this could be fun. If it's not, I won't be disappointed. If it is, I'll you know I'd be happy too. But guys, there um, is yet another. There is yet another candidate we have not listed. I know who you're gonna say. Go ahead. You know who I'm gonna say. Yep. It's goddamn Shart, the Shark yeah. Dart but, Baby. But, but Shart's not dead. And um, has not been dead. But no, Malcolm true. doesn't yeah, know but it, that. Yeah, and if she changes to a whoa, shark, maybe. Wait a minute. No, wait. no, no, not shark. No, oh, no, no. the baby, right? The baby, dude, the baby. Wait, he doesn't, I don't think he knows anything about Barry Dragon's baby child. I don't know how to make the word balloon make sense, but dude, I'm just saying Unless there's the more the baby than... looks like Mako, it well, suddenly well, grows well, huge. Well, <laughs> right. He, well, the baby does look like Mako in the one picture we see. He's got a very large mouth. So I'm just saying, there could be... A few characters. It's so funny that there could be a few characters yeah, but that the, that could but be. There are, those characters don't make any sense with the you're dead part. Yeah. Mako's, Mako makes sense. Basilisk Dick makes sense because they're both dead. Mm-hmm. Um, open Face makes more sense than Shart or Battle Dragon's kid. Not Battle Dragon. Yeah, Battle Dragon. Good memory. Um, hmm. I mean, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It could be anything. I know, um, no, wait, that was Shark. Never mind. Never mind. Moving right along. Any rate, uh, hype level immediately upon seeing that cover, I screamed yes and threw a punch at my coworker. <laughs> His covers have been fire lately. The, yeah. The primary colors and just the stark contrast. Uh, I love them. The angles, the like, cool, like, camera work angles, and, like, mystery, too. Like, the empty grave cover, it's like, what... What's going on? Like, who's Empty Grave? Or, like, this cover, you're supposed to be dead. It immediately draws you in. Guys, Oh, that's, it, it could that's be, what a cover's it, supposed it, to it be. It could be Virus. I think Virus had teeth like that, too. God, oh, Jim, you're not. blowing my mind. I hope not. Yeah, I kind of hope it's not Virus. Virus hurts my head. Plus, virus. now I love I'm it. I'm pretty sure virus. virus got dumped into a sun, so I think he's he's out. Yeah. No, that would make sense with the year deadline, though. Yep. You never Dude, know. What if it's a virus from another dimension? <laughs> and really, Craig's what, head what explodes. If, what if it's my dream and it's the real Mako, but he's stitched together with cadaver's thread? <laughs> yes, Jim, yes, yes. <laughs> dream big, dude. You know that's not happening. What if it's dreaming. that little, uh, is that world muncher from Dimension X have? He's got flat The awesome feet, eater? Right? The awesome eater. Ah, you knew his name. That's awesome. Yeah, dude. That's awesome eater. <laughs> Who's got teeth? Get the list. <laughs> who's got shark teeth my grammy it's... don't <laughs> that was unexpected and i loved it my grandmother's dead oh that was even more unexpected but i did <laughs> not love it maybe I didn't. Ma- maybe it's a tiny cave and these are just stalactites and stalagmites and then well if you're gonna say that then i'm gonna bring my my someone's throwing cool ranch doritos at yes the <laughs> they're just <laughs> they're coming it's good, dude. It's a good cover. It gets you thinking. It's a, it's a cave, and it's uh, that guy that was in during the spawn issues. What was his name? Uh, the, the elder, the chosen no. one, <laughs> the the chosen elder. Remember, we ribbed on him for not being particularly memorable. <laughs> yeah, it was the all mighty, built up the mighty one. Then, yeah, the all mighty built one. up, and then 
He died in uh, a cave. Yep. <laughs> but like maybe Osama he didn't die. Laden. He's alive. Like and Osama Malcolm bin Laden. <laughs> Malcolm staring into his stalactite cave. I think if it's Basilisk Dick, I don't even know what to think, guys. I or we're just... looking out from the inside of Basilisk Dick. <laughs> right. Think about that. That will be the probably the first time that you, the reader, have been shoved into a urethra <laughs> to view a hero. I can't Speak think of another comic. Okay. What comic? No, I'm talking about being shoved into a urethra. I know. That's what I'm saying. Was this some Anton Dreck joint you're dropping <laughs> on me? Uh, I'm just talking real life here, buddy. Oh, all right. I think we're getting way too silly. We need to end the news. Yeah, let's go. Fake we got news. a lot. We got yeah, a we lot. Can- yeah, we got a lot, dudes. Listen, I just want to say um, we got a lot of letters, and thank you, dear sweet listeners, for participating because, man, it feels good. Well, awesome news section. Tell you what, why don't we jump into some letters? Uh, we appreciate hearing from you, Finheads. It's super awesome. And, uh, man, we got some loquacious listeners, if I do say so myself. <laughs> Starting with our very own legendary letter hack. None other than Sotiris Gravis, who writes, Dear Fincast crew, hey dudes, given the homage to comic strips in Savage Dragon number 252, one listener suggested that you guys should check out Daniel Close Ice Haven. I recommend similar comic strip formats by the way of Eric's Herculean one-shot, as well as Close graphic novel Wilson. While both cartoonists enjoy deviating from the distinctive drawing styles in favor of something more cartoony, there are many more comparisons to be made. Apart from the similar way they part their hair, eat your heart out, Natalie Portman in V for Vendetta. They both suffered from a more lamentable loss in the form of lost original art due to fire. Tragically, Eric's house burnt down, but had the pleasure of museum retrospectives of their work. With regard to writing, both are as adept at humor and satire as they are serious subject matter, with a proficiency for dialogue that gives voice to outsiders, outcasts, with a preoccupation for sex. Now, as for the most glaring differences, Eric Larson never shows anyone smoking in Savage Dragon, whereas Daniel Close's Death Ray, a teenage boy, acquires superpowers from smoking cigarettes. It's worth noting that Donald Trump as a heat ray that he wants to use on the Democrats. And VP Mike Pence (laughs) actually thinks smoking doesn't kill you. All this is as much of America as a hellscape of wildfires. Too timely. Too timely. Hashtag too timely. Um, If Maxine always had a cigarette after sex, she'd already have stage four cancer by now. (laughs) It's true. The most... That's... Yes. The most devastating difference that separates these two artists is that Close had three stories turned into movies, whereas most Venn addicts know they'll probably never see Savage Dragon get the Hollywood treatment. Cue sad trombone sound effect. (laughs) That said, Close doesn't have you guys. Suck it, Close. Anyway, look forward to your special 100th episode. Sincerely, Sotiris Gravis. This is my favorite part right here. P.S. I like to pronounce close the same way you do, but it actually sounds like house. Guess I should have said something in the beginning. <laughs> Wouldn't have hurt. Wouldn't have hurt. <laughs> so I don't wear clothes around the house. I wear clouds around the hose. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> Is that what you're? Is that what you're getting? I have at? no idea what he's saying in this I'm, whole letter. It sounds like the surname is pronounced Klaus. <laughs> yeah, that's it, Daniel Klaus. I don't like it. I don't like Klaus. I, I, my American blood boils at the sound of the name Klaus. I don't like it. I well, I think of like K L A U S, like Klaus. Yeah. yeah, like Klaus. I am Sven. You are Klaus. Daniel Klaus. Um, he's merely contrasting and comparing Eric and uh, Klaus. That's all. Um, the listener suggested that we check out Klaus, and he recommended uh, other strips, and then he decided to just do a little. I appreciate it. I appreciate this letter because there was clearly a lot of thought put into it. And, uh, you know, jokes aside, it's always great to hear from you, big guy. We love you, Satiris. We appreciate you, Satiris. Yeah, do your thing. Moving. Right. 
allow me to exit the stage. I'm going to exit this letter as satirist. Now, if I may, exit the stage so that another jubilant jotter of... <laughs> I'm done. No more. I can't. i got to stop. Jim, take it away. All right. We got a letter coming in. says... All right, still relevant. Uh, still relevant with the new. Uh, still relevant with the new issue. Thought you guys could still use it. Uh, I guess this is the letter that was written a while back. He decided to send again. Here it is, boys. My funniest comic strip suggestions for Savage Dragon two fifty two. Uh, Scary Gary with Glum as the Green Monster. Garfield somehow, some way. Overboard <laughs> with the Atlantean. Sherman's Lagoon featuring Mako. Foxtrot. Just do it. It got done. They got. They did it. Yeah, born loser featuring Dung, Ernest uh, Frank and Ernest can't be done, but a great strip. Family Circus. I agree with you, Craig. Blondie, it got done. What I say? What I say? Who remembers? Blondie <laughs> could be a cool style. Uh, Tin Tin or Asterix. God Squad and the Asterix art style baby. Uh, those are not comic strips, but I would appreciate seeing Tin Tin repped at some point. Uh, keep the fin cast going. The humor has been on point lately, and this is from Tony M. Lately, um, it's on point every episode, right? And he says, P.S., when are you guys doing Super Patriot Liberty and Justice? Well, yeah, that'll come when it comes, because we got to get to it chronologically with the retro reviews, which are a little bit behind right now, but we hope to resume fairly soon. It's like always me. good when the retro reviews are behind, because it means that the regular issues are flowing. We got stuff, oh, yeah. yeah, we got stuff to talk about. Oh, yeah. Retros are fillers, but uh, we love them. Uh, we'll get it. We'll get it. Our own uh, FinCast host did a, a Garfield. Yeah, uh, yeah. For, since Eric didn't do it, you know. It's it's funny. Like I like, actually, that this letter got used late because it allows us to compare and contrast uh, Tony's guesses with what happened, right? So, like, we got a Blondie. We got a Family Circus. We got a Foxtrot. I did a Garfield. Um, yeah, Where man. can people see your Garfield strip? <laughs> On the Facebook group. <laughs> There's uh we do a spoiler uh thread every month. If you are a listener and not a reader, please check it out. It's fun talking with other finheads, but uh like the Savage Dra- Eric Larson Savage Dragon fan page on Facebook. Yep. Um or send us a Twitter. I can always post it on the on the Twitter. Yeah, we'll do that. We'll do that. Um I thought it was hilarious. I thought you did a good job with it. Thanks, bro. It's pretty difficult to do with Garfield and it, it was had to work with it was a nightmare <laughs> I, I started doing it and immediately realized I was like mm, god damn this is hard <laughs> and somebody yelled at doing me. this instead of my own webcomic <laughs> somebody yelled at me for using four panels and I realized they're right dude Garfield has three yeah you failed on, the, you failed on many points of actually emulating the style that you were trying but I, I it was did, still dude. excellent Jim just swooping right in just hey. to shit on Raven. Hey. Bad edit. <laughs> you failed pretty much the whole way through, but the good whole try. whole exercise <laughs> D minus. It only ever has three panels. Yep. Yeah. Oh, fuck that comic. It and, doesn't fuck and, around and, with and, and, four, and everything is on one single plane. Yeah, Why that's would you a... constrain yourself like that. And Jim. Do you know, I super seriously, as I drew that other, like, that fourth panel where, like, Garfield is in the background and, like, they're in the foreground, I realized, I was like, oh, this just looks so wrong. I was like, there's never perspective in Garfield. Ever. Every, everyone is standing like they are up against a fucking wall. You Jesus should Christ. just You should have just drawn one panel and then copy-pasted <laughs> everything Ugh. for the rest. Well, yeah, it was. I failed. I really did fail. Like after I looked at it, it was funny because somebody was like, "This, this should be used. This is good." And I was like, "Thank you," but in my head, I was thinking, "But I see all the problems." Like, I thank super, you, but this is shit. I it, flunked the assignment, and it dude. just shows you how challenging it is. Yeah, and it's how hard, and how incredibly Eric aced it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, if you don't have a trained eye, you don't know. Like I didn't. I had no idea it's not ever three pan- more than three panels. Like, oh, if you're yeah. not really studying this stuff, you can screw it up. And that's why, uh, again, like I did this real quick before the uh, before the issue, and then after the issue hit, like I was like thankful that it didn't get used or anything because it was like, dude, it would have looked so bad compared to like like Eric just nailed every one of those things he did, and like then you would have had my shit like looking like Garfield wrong, you know. I was like, dude, I'm glad. I'm glad it could just be a free internet thing. Like, what, what did you end up calling it? 
Barfield. Right, you should have done uh, Barfield without Barfield as an edit. <laughs> yeah, except Barfield literally vomits on uh, Malcolm, so how would that look? <laughs> like, that would be weird. If, you, if, your com- if your comic can't pass the Barfield without Barfield test, it's also a failure. Yeah, it's a failure on many levels. I It is my ugly baby, and I do not love it. So, gentlemen... Should we do our next segment? I think we should do our segment that perhaps in a different edit of this FinCast was done incorrectly <laughs> early. But I think it's a very interesting thought you just had, Gregory. A very interesting conversation. It's a nice little segue to our interesting conversations where we come up with a topic to discuss and maybe debate and ask you, the listener, to provide input. You can uh, send us... An email at savagefincast at gmail dot com or PM us at uh, the fincast uh, Facebook page. Um, however, you want to get a hold of us, just do it. So yeah. last uh, last I don't remember which episode, but last time we did a, a interesting conversations, we asked about issue two fifty, and our question was. When you flipped the page and saw Savage Dragon on the la- I know, Paul Dragon on the last page of issue 250, what were your initial thoughts? And we got a decent amount of feedback on that. So, uh, Raven, why don't you take it away with the first one? Thank you, good sir. Uh, I think that was a really good, interesting conversation topic, just because, again, that was such a punch in the face, kick in the dick, like, shocker. So, uh, awesome, interesting topic. Uh here comes our first response. I thought it was a fun way to bring back Savage Dragon without bringing back the one from the ongoing. Hopefully, this will help segue into the whole Angel's mom's hand coming out of the grave thing from way back. And that was from uh, Dakota Darf Fitzgerald, who is uh, one of our more recent uh, Savage Dragon fans. Only been into it like for two or three years, but... Has told me, you know, over Twitter many times, fucking loves the fan group, loves the fandom, loves, like, interacting, the fin cast and all that. So, thank you so much, Dakota. I like his nickname. I want my nickname to be Darf. She. At any rate, <laughs> I think uh, Jim's got the next one. Uh, let's see here. Okay. My thought when I turned that page is, or was, are you fucking kidding me? What is this? Why are we doing this? The fin is kind of fucked up. I wasn't into it, but was riding the wave of 250 good feelings, and the rest of the issue was great, etc. It felt like a really lame way to bring Dragon back in. But then I thought, Eric's got something in mind, he'll make it work. And so far, Paul Dragon is different enough in experience and in personality that I'm up for seeing where this leads the book. There's a whole other reality out there for us to learn about. And this is from Raymond Cummings. I like that perspective. I like the person who wasn't feeling it. And then, like, the more they were into it, they were like, you know what? I'm coming around. (laughs) All right, let's go to the next one. I got, uh, when I flipped the page, I thought, hell yeah. And Eric has done it again. I know some people are done with Dragon and are glad he's gone, but isn't that like being a Christian and being done with Jesus? <laughs> Keep up the good work, guys. This is from Mike uh, Makuch. I think that's how you say his name. Good enough. Um, yeah, we're all friends I, I, here. Sounds about right, maybe. I don't yeah, know. yeah, we're all friends here. Mike, uh, we apologize. Next time, give us a Daniel Klaus-style phonetic breakdown, and we won't butcher it. Dragon has died, dragon has risen, dragon will come again. <laughs> Eric has done it again! Uh, yeah, I like that take too. I think I'm going to wrap it up with our final interesting conversation reaction. I thought about Dragon getting a second chance to be a grandfather. Being a grandfather Aww. was on his mind right before he exploded in 225. <laughs> Says, friend of the show... Brian Henney. Uh, yeah, that's funny, right? Yeah, like this is now Paul gets a chance to, uh, he he shouldn't have died skinny. He gets a chance to be Buff Dragon, <laughs> sexy Buff Dragon, uh, who bangs the knocks the bottom out of Alex just to tell her he doesn't really even know her. 
<laughs> and be loving to his grandkids. So, yeah, Paul's just getting to spin those wheels. I'm stoked to see where Eric goes with this. Yes. Yeah. I'm. It's incredibly awesome, I think. Um, yeah, it's fantastic. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for playing along. Thank you for your feedback. Um, we love hearing from you. And uh, please, please reach out to us for our next Finteresting conversation. Gentlemen, are you ready for a new Finteresting topic? I'm ready. I'm ready, dude. Sure. You know. you, Why not? Are you ready to have your have your minds completely rocked all the way to the core? Well, here, well, here goes. What other property would you like to see Eric give the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle Urban Legends approach, where he oversees it, and it has ties to the highbrow universe? So, so let's hear from you. <laughs> no, I was going to say, so just to clarify, this is giving something like the Ninja Turtles the same treatment as the Ninja Turtles did. Essentially, yeah, for a, those a who... third-party property brought into the, to the Eric Larson, Savage Dragon, highbrow fold. Right, not necessarily Eric doing it, because as we know, Gary and Frank did Urban Legends, but... You know, Eric was highly involved, and uh, obviously any Dragon fan feels his presence on these books. It was very much Gary and Frank's baby, but at the same time, like, you can also, you to, can't... It yeah, you had just, to go through Eric, I think, right? I mean, it had to yeah, pass he, the sniff test with Eric. He was, right. the, he was the kind of the producer. Right, and, and essentially that's what the question is. It's just saying, hey guys... You know, Eric's too busy, he's making Savage Dragon, but someone of your choosing throws him another third party property and he does it. So you can even get like as into this interesting convo as you want. Like you can give me a creative team, or you can just give me just an IP that you want to see him sort of toss at the highbrow universe. All a Ninja Turtles Urban Legends. So please, I've said way too much, take it away. I don't Eric, know. Jen- <laughs> Is All right, that... I guess I'll go first. <laughs> Craig, take it away. Uh, Love and Rockets. No, I'm just kidding. I was um, like, what? <laughs> what? I got to say, uh, you know, it's Eric. So why don't we go with a Kirby property and say Captain Victory, one he was trying to do way back when and didn't really get it off the ground. Mm-hmm. Uh, he could draw it. It would be cool. If he can't draw it, let's pull in someone like Tom Scholey or Michelle Fife or someone like that. I'm going to say can't. Um, Let's put the stipulation that he cannot draw. It's got to be like Urban Legends right. was, where someone else Let's is Let's just doing. go with Sholi. He can write and draw it. And he oh, can just that's good. blow your mind. Oh, that's good. Captain but it's Victory. highbrow related, so in what way is Captain Victory? you got to help me a little bit. Make this a little more fintrist. He can bump into Vanguard. He can bump into any of the space characters. Mother Mayhem. Uh-huh. He can bump into, it doesn't, you know, it could be any. Why anything. space characters? I don't know anything about Captain Victory. He's a space character. He is a space character, so he's not a Captain America type. No, no, no. That's a twist. I would have thought Captain he was. Victory and the Galactic Rangers. Oh, he's from Pacific Comics, kind of the same time as Destroyer Duck and uh, Silver Star. Uh, he's got a dog guy that and a lion guy that are like uh, on his uh, team. Is like mates on his ship. It's an nice. interesting property. It's really cool. Nice. Uh, Jim. Raven, are you are you stalling as well? Oh, and no, Captain I Victory know. is unofficially kind of tied in with the new gods. Like, mm-hmm. hint, hint, wink, wink kind of thing, which <laughs> makes it fun. Okay, so you would also get, like, some God Town, some sweet God Town style interaction, right? Yeah. With, like, Hercules and, like, all those guys. You can do whatever, go anywhere. It, it's such a fun nice. comic. Nice. And you're going to give it to Tom, surely. Yeah, yeah, let's do that. That's fucking, I'm down with that, dude. I'm down with that. Very down with For that. For the listeners, um, if you don't know Captain Victory, just Google it. It's towards the end yeah. of, of Kirby's kind of comics career, so some of the mm-hmm. later issues get a little wonky, but man, I don't know. It's fun. The characters are fun. It's, it's worth a look, a look through. 
this is what look there. this is really challenging for me because I'm really particular about these kind of things mm-hmm. because I overthink it like crazy. Like I want to think like what can, what can fit what what makes sense in this context. Like you, you can't pick something like I don't know like Elf Quest that's like so divorced <laughs> from like like contemporary uh, times or Earth for that matter. But but dude, here's the thing is that I'm not going to dear listeners, I'm not going to restrict you in the way Jim's restricting himself because I get where you're coming from, Jim. Like you don't want fucking elf quests riding wolf through the streets of Chicago. It doesn't make any sense for either property. But I would love it if someone has an idea with a creative team that they think would make that work, then by God, throw it out there as your choice. But I get it. No elf quest for you. I'm going to say my choice, dude. Are you ready? It's not really particularly daring, but I think it would fucking sing. And I'm sorry it's also not particularly clever, but, like, I think that, Craig, yours was more clever. But, dude, I would love to see uh, Eric give the Urban Legends treatment to Youngblood. Okay. Um, He did such a good job on... uh, He did such a good job on uh, Supreme... Yeah, and uh, I think that probably a uh, little bit of friction happened there because he wasn't maybe able to like see it through. So if he was a little bit more of like you know urban legend sniff test, where he was just sort of giving the okay to what was being done. Um, but I would love to see a young blood book that was way deep into like highbrow territory. Um, just have young blood button ads with the SOS all the time because they're both government teams. Right. Yeah. Um. Just have young blood, you know, just fucking stepping on people's toes because, like, they're celebrities. Like, I would love to see Eric's take on, I think there's comedic things that he could do because he's, like, funny. Uh, but, again, Eric's not doing this, so what creative team would I have? If it's going to be a young blood book, I want, uh, of my choice, if I'm just fucking doing this, however, uh, again, Craig, I'm going to copy you. I'm going to get a writer-artist combo. I'm going to do that, that Daniel Warren Johnson. That did Murder Falcon. Ah, uh, uh, yeah, cr- yeah, yeah, good. Stuff. Yeah, and he's for Young Blood. Yeah, for Young Blood That's because dude, a choice. Oh, he is a goddamn demon. He could do anything. The thing is, is if you haven't looked it up his Twitter feed, the man can fucking do anything. Oh, and sure. So, I would love to see his big fucking crazy action uh, on a Young Blood book with like SOS characters. And like, you know, uh, Universo and just fucking Glum and just all that shit. Uh, and again, uh, you, uh, Eric's just there to just be like, you know, nah, that wouldn't happen. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, that's good. Just kind of like that. So that's my pick. That's my uh, Urban Legends uh, highbrow. I think that like Youngblood fits really well, obviously, because it had a past. Yeah. With I, image. Any, most they, of Lightfield characters like would work pretty good. Right, right, and that's why I did it. Uh, Jim, it's funny that you should bring up, like I was criticizing it. Listeners, uh, I originally was going to do Bone okay because <laughs> I, I thought it would be fucking crazy as shit, and I was like, yeah, man, I wonder what, like, with, Dude, if I, I Eric have, was in. Do you guys remember the Bone postcard with Dragon? I have one. Well, well, the stupid, stupid rat creatures are at Barbaric's wedding. Yeah. <laughs> are they? They are. That's because at the time, at the time, Bone was published at Image. Yeah. Which, um, in fact, I think they show up in that Gen thirteen issue that the, Dragon's abs- in too. Yeah, they absolutely do, dude. I was literally what I was going to say. Um, I know it's cheating, dude. I know that Young Blood was like had a shared universe with anyway, but like I don't give a shit. Like I, that's what I want. So and if I was going to give, you don't care. Yes, absolutely. If I was going to do twenty seven issues, if I was going to do twenty six issues of him overseeing something. I would love to see him oversee some highbrow. I would love to see that interplay. And I think he'd do a really good job with Youngblood. And I think Daniel Warren Johnson would blow everyone's fucking tits off. And I think he'd love it. So, Jim, you're the last. Right. I've been asked Dragon this entire time because this is a very hard question for me. Fost. Mm-hmm. My, my, my first, my, <laughs> yes. my first um, gut choice was Power Rangers. Go with it, dude. But I'm going to revise that and oh. say Godzilla. <laughs> Godzilla, nice. Yes, Eric, Eric Larson approved Godzilla comics. That's Godzilla, what I'm for. Can Godzilla the, attacking can the Shogun Chicago. Warriors show up. Yes. Well, no, they're owned by Marvel. So 
have to come up with Alt- your own giant robot team to fight Godzilla. Are we but doing think, all Toho? But think, but think about well, yeah, basically the entire Godzilla like lineup. But all like, the Toho. But okay. like, imagine it: uh, Eric Larson coming up with like stories about mo- giant monsters fighting superheroes, and maybe like giant robots and stuff. And remember, it's in the highbrow universe as well. Well, right. here's, here's another cool tie-in. Eric loves Herb Trimpe, and Herb Trimpe did issue one of God, at least issue one of Godzilla for Marvel, if not more issues. Nice. Did he? I didn't know that. I didn't know he did the first issue or one issue. I think he did more than the first issue. I think he did a bunch, but yeah. That is a sweet drop. So we can Google it, I'm sure. Like, Absolutely. just do Herb, Herb Trimp Godzilla. Oh, dude, that is good, yeah, It would dude. be fun to have God's, uh, Dragon sock Godzilla at least once. Or Malcolm, rather. Or Jim? Good. Oh, sorry. I was just going to say, I think that's a better pick than you think. Because there's, like, to me, Martian Shrink Ray fun you can have. Sure. Giant Osama? Yes, dude. Craig, I didn't even think about that. That's fucking awesome. Giant Bin Laden <laughs> versus Godzilla, fucking a. Mauve Wolfman, <laughs> big big mummy, big mu- oh dude. Universal, the Grox, I know the Grox, right? Yeah, there's all those creatures from the Earth that would make perfect little like little things to attack like the demon. And wouldn't there, like giant de- yeah. Craig? You sorry, we're f- we're finishing each other's sandwiches, dude. That's exactly what I was going to say. They were giant demonoids. It's awesome. Right, who's your creative I, team? Yeah, yeah. I don't have one. I don't think that far. That is too hard for me. I'll say it for like you, James Ke- Like Keith Giffen yes. and... Uh, <laughs> uh, so, yeah, so, what, who did you just say? I said Stoko. Yeah, Stoko. He, which is a cheat because he did some Godzilla stuff. He did stuff. the best Godzilla great. comics. You're right. Yep. I'm a cheater. Ooh, ooh. Or Art Adams. Yeah. No, you can't get Art Adams to do interiors. Stop fantasizing. <laughs> Gotta be realistic, man. With these fantastic answers. <laughs> yes. Gotta live in the realm of reality or else. You're right. How is it a You're challenge right. if you don't work within limitations? You're Jeff right. Darrow. You're right. <laughs> yeah, oh, dude. Fucking A. Can you imagine, like, uh, Jeff Darrow drawing, like, uh, fucking just a demonoid like just a godzilla just blasting oh, yeah. a big well, dick off a i mean demonoid. you just have to look at rusty and big guy basically but pretty much guys i think that was meaty as hell i loved it yeah so i want to hear what, what the listeners have to say please yeah uh, so yeah, yeah send us uh, your uh, answers to this interesting conversation to savage fincast at gmail.com of course you can find us at savage fincast.com Leave a comment on our uh, on our any episode, or find us on YouTube uh, and our cha- on our Savage Fincast YouTube channel. So, what time and is it, guys? With that, uh, it's not meat and potatoes time just yet. We we'll oh. need a real quick oh. quiz. <laughs> oh. That's that's okay. We had one last show, and I just had so much fun. I had to do another one. This time I have a proper tiebreaker. Don't worry. We will have a winner. We will have a loser. Um, if I may grab a scratch of sheet of paper. Yeah, there we go. Oops, got to grab an ink pen. All right. You ready, fellers? You ready? You ready? One of you is going to win. One of you is going to lose. I call this quiz show. It's going to go real quick, okay? What's at stake so here? Um, I think the loser has to um, write a haiku about uh, Maxine's fetishes. No, it's okay. I pass. Okay. Come on. <laughs> come on. You got to be a good sport. I, couldn't, I can't write a regular haiku. Uh, well, the loser has to write a poem about Maxine's fetishes. It doesn't have to be I'll long. It could be like hickory dickory dock maxine loves some cock like that could be it you're done how's it sound do you accept these stakes contestants i guess <laughs> so the it. fact that you you really yeah you realize the fact that you don't want to do it makes it more appealing right all right this is not a contest of speed gentlemen you do not need buzzers i call this quiz teenage mutant number turtles all you have to do 
I'm going to ask you a question, and you simply give me the number you think it is, and whoever is closest wins. Wait, so so repeat that one more time for me and the listener. For you and the listener, here really it goes. Really, just for me because I wasn't this, listening. That's okay. So, Teenage Mutant Number Turtles. Basically, I'm going to give you. I'm going to ask a question. You've got ten seconds, and then I'm going to stop and ask both of you what your number is to respond to my question and whoever's closer gets the point so it's not a thing where you buzz in first or anything like not that. speed okay. no speed needed okay. we're, it's kind of like how last time you both got to just say it we're limiting it to 10 seconds because I don't want you to be able to google it and I don't want you to be able to think too much okay? I would never cheat and, and by the way I don't expect you before we go into this listeners I don't expect anyone to know these this is just about a crazy question and then it's also kind of a way to give you guys trivia in a fun way and uh, it's about whoever gets closest. So don't even worry about it. Just do your best. All right. You got it? You got it? All right. We ready? All right. Get ready. Question number one. Just There's just 10 of them. It'll go real quick. How many episodes of the original 80, 1987 Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle show were there? You got 10 seconds to Is it think whoever's of your the closest? answer. 187. Whoever gets closest. Is it like 187? Right, over you lose. Yeah, yeah. Just, just, just wait. Just wait. Yeah, it doesn't matter. It's whoever's closest. All right. All right. 187. Gentlemen, Thank you. All right. Uh, what's your guess, Craig? Uh, 240. 187 was way closer. There were 193. They aired between 1987 and 1996 across 10 seasons. Jim gets the point. All right. Next question. Along those lines, how many episodes did the new, the newest cartoon, Rise of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, how many episodes did it last? Wait, got 10 was, seconds it, was it canceled? To... Uh, yeah, yeah, it just did canceled, but not important. Uh, how many well, episodes? Duh, it does did... matter, because if there's more episodes coming. <laughs> well, it canceled, so. I didn't realize how many... it canceled, that sucks. Yeah, well, factor it into your 10 seconds, here goes. I'm just giving you 10 seconds to 39. think how many. How many episodes did Rise of the Ninja Turtles last? Are we supposed to answer after 10 seconds or as soon as we think of it? You an wait until after the 10 seconds. Oh. <laughs> I'm giving you time to think. That 10 seconds is just so you can think. Oh, I don't need 10 seconds. That's my problem. Oh, yeah. You're, yeah I was like, this is not a contest of speed. That's okay. All right. We're done. 10 seconds are done. Jim says 39. Craig, how many do you say? Eight. Jim's probably <laughs> cheating. He said 39 exactly, which is what it was. All right. Do you want to know how you come to that con- that number? Uh-huh. I know the series hasn't lasted very long, so I assume three seasons, and there are 13 episodes to a typical modern-day cartoon series. Uh, amazingly, you were right but wrong. There were 39 seasons. I mean, 39. There were, there were 39 one-episode seasons. No, there were 39 episodes across eight. two seasons. <laughs> He said, hey, yeah, that was the I don't even care. I thought that's it was somebody one wants season. To, I don't know. Somebody wants to write a dirty poem is all I heard when I heard that. All right, next question. We're keeping it rolling, keeping it tight. How much did the original uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles live action film gross? Gross. The first yeah, one? What was the final? what was the final take home? Mm-hmm. The Jim Henson puppets. Uh, you got 10 seconds to think. Oh, I don't even this is know, the Jim dude. Henson puppets puppets no it's just a guess dude you're just guessing how much did it gross? jim goes first on this one <laughs> it doesn't even matter all right it has been 10 seconds jim what do you think 200 million all right so uh craig what do you think 180 million all right uh jim is fucking cheating uh because it was 202 million <laughs> So Jim, Jim is <laughs> maybe I cheating. just know how I think I'm writing media, this fucking I poem. Think, ain't I? Maybe I just know how much media costs. Uh huh. I think you're a cheater. I don't cheat he, about this. He, I'm an expert. He got, <laughs> I'm a scientist. Maybe uh-huh. I just know how many cartoons there are in a season because I watch too many goddamn cartoons <laughs> instead of doing real shit in the real world. Yeah, pretty much. So a uh, fun little trivia fact, uh, two, at $202 million, uh, Ninja Turtles was the highest grossing independent film at that time. It was not surpassed until 1999 by the Blair Witch Project. It was the ninth highest grossing film It only cost like $30 million to make, right? right? Yeah, very profitable. Yep, $30 million, 202 out. Very good. 
Uh, by contrast, I read about our next... this shit all the time. That's it. We'll see if you're a cheater. I'm gonna think I'm gonna make it five seconds. Because honestly, I think you're cheating. That was way too Dude, good. Did you not hear me like blurting the answers out as soon as you finish your questions? I know. I still think you're a cheater. Okay, I'll do ten seconds. Hold on. All right. Okay. So get ready. The next question along those lines: um, the most recent live action Ninja Turtles movie, Out of the Shadows. Mm. Uh, how much did that gross worldwide? Wait, is it the first one or the second one? Uh, the most recent one, the second one. It's Out of the Shadows. Is it the an- an animated one? It's a live no, action. It's a live one. action Michael Bay produced one. Yep. Oh. Yep. So the uh, second that's been, one. Yeah, the second one. That's been ten seconds. Uh, just guess. How much would you say that this latest Turtles movie made? Two hundred and thirty million. Okay. I am going to go with my first Jim? guess. One hundred and eighty million. This time, Craig takes the point. It yes. is two hundred and forty-five point six million. Those dumb. You Michael were Bay fucks. You were really close. Um, but interesting that movie to see. Probably cost like a hundred million to make, so it wasn't it, like a big success. Much less profitable. You're correct. Uh, I think it was something like a hundred and eighty million to make. So yeah, it did not do as good as the original live action. Um, moving right along, guys, get ready. This one's a little Savage Dragon related. If Savage Dragon and all four turtles were side by side. How many toes would there be in all? Wait, say it again. If Savage, if Savage Dragon Dr- and, and if the- Savage Dragon and all four turtles were side by side, how many toes would there be in all? You got seven seconds. It's ticking away. Five, four, three, two, one. Stop, gentlemen. How many toes Ten. are on the ground? Ten. 10 no 20 oh, crazy. You <laughs> too me. late too late i'm sorry Fuck. you both you i had the answer it. you you confused me craig with your, <laughs> your wrong answer <laughs> wait what are you talking about why it's, did it's, i confuse you <laughs> it's 20 toes it's 20 oh, toes the answer. you're right, right. there's two <laughs> feet two legs. <laughs> <laughs> 10 <laughs> Fun fact, uh, Savage Dragon does actually predate Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, so he doesn't have Ninja Turtle feet. Savage Dragon uh, Turtles have Savage Dragon feet. Isn't that weird? Think about it. Just let that cook your noodle. No one got a point on that. I love it. All right. <laughs> because Jim got bamboozled by Craig's buffoonery. All right. because he's listening to what I have to say. See, it shows you. It shows that he's cheating. <laughs> Get ready. Can Jim cheat on this one? How many years did the Mirage Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles comic run? You have 10 seconds. Hold How on, many years? Hold on. You're years? talking about all of them wow. until, like, the Viacom buyout? You know what? Listen to this guy. Yep. I don't care. Just uh, what's your answer because it's for fun. 10 seconds. Go. This is the original Ninja Turtles. Mirage started it. When did it end? How many years? Okay. You don't know when did it end. All right. Let's just get your answers. Just get your thoughts. So, uh, answers, please. Number of years. 18? 18. All right. 20. And Jim? 20? All right. Turns out, according to my sources, it was 30, which puts Jim's clo- Jim a. closer. Wait, 30, 30 years? 30, 30 doesn't make any sense. 1984 to 2014. That's, That's still... 30 years. Yep. Sorry. This you got to live with it. Wait, wait. You got to live with it. Another one of these. Here we go. Nope. Here we go. Win- nope. You're Fantastic winning. Fantastic, Raven. You just <laughs> but, blew it again. But, but. Nope. The thirtieth anniversary book came out in. Holy fuck! What are all these? That's covers? an two thousand fourteen. Right, that came out twenty fourteen. Yeah, that's when it ended. But that's not when the buyout happened. The 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 the, uh, the IDW Ninja Turtle series have been going for like a couple of years by that point. I'm gonna dock you a point for being argumentative. <laughs> so now you only. I don't have three. care. You're writing that poem, yeah, you Jack. Do. You care. All right, you just lost a point. It's right. three to one. Now I'm going to cheat because now I'm pissed. Craig, you're back in it. Get ready. Um, so, in the final year that the original 80s Turtle toy line was made, how many toys came out in that final year? Final year? Of... Yep. You don't need the year. You just need to know the, how many toys came out. Wait, All right. for, from Toy Biz? What, what year? From oh, the, now, now we're getting doesn't matter it. from whoever made that final year of the original 80s toys like there was a final year that the original 80s line ended how many toys came out that year just guess a number 
Uh, eight. Okay. That's, My gut uh, said five. I think I said eight for every answer. Okay, and uh, you said five. Guess what? It was nine. Oh, so Fuck Craig yes. gets the point. This just got a lot tighter. Two to three. What's the score? Two it to three. Who? Two Jim? to three. Craig. Jim is in the lead. Uh, and the interesting little tidbit is that that last year was the dinosaur turtles mentioned in the previous oh, fuck fincast. Them. Fuck them. Yeah. Yeah. So get ready. Next question. How much did the turtles sell for to Nickelodeon? How much did, oh, I don't know. I know the turtles, knows it's this. just your guess. It's How much did the guests, uh, go for? You got five, <sighs> four, three, two, one pencils down. Just guess a number. How many? How much did it sell for? 180 million. So Jim says 180. What do you say, Craig? Uh, just guess. It's just 210. 210. All right. So uh, you're both going to shit yourselves. Shockingly, it was 90, wasn't it? It was 60 million. Oh damn! That's uh, all they fucking got. It's crazy when we think about self doubted myself. A uh, video game ah. company uh, was just bought by Microsoft for seven point five billion. <laughs> I was gonna say twenty million, and I was, when he, when Jim said that number, I was like, "Wow, I'm way too low, and I'm gonna look like an idiot." But ten toes. <laughs> <sighs> All right, next question. We'll keep it rolling. Um, this one's a little tricky, so I'm gonna not just start the timer. I'm gonna explain myself and make sure you understand. It's not really tricky, but all right, you got to include cameos, okay? Understand that when I say this next question, it is not simply turtles-based things. It's even if a turtle was in it, okay? So, including cameos, how many Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle video games are there? Oh, fuck off with the video nice. games. Nice. Yeah. You said like like master. Did you say in- in- did you say including cameos? Yeah, that means Mortal Kombat counts. Oh, how many like- games? So across Easy. all systems. Yeah, just guess. Oh, that's easy. Just guess. All right, it has been 10 seconds. Pencils down. Give me an answer. Just a number. Just throw it out. 18. 18 says Craig. Uh, 18's a good guess. I'm going to say 15. 15? Jim, you're on the money. You are both wrong uh, by uh, 45 was what it was, but that puts Craig closest. 45? Yeah, there were 45. <laughs> well, I guess that wasn't easy. I, I guess I didn't think about, like... A little bit of trivia, okay? The first game was on, on the NES in May 12th, 1989, showing up in the Famicom in Japan. Came out in June, not long after yeah, in America. Four Ninten- there's four NES games. Right? The most recent game was released just last year in August. Yeah. So, yeah, Turtles, they're cranking out those oh, games, there's probably man. a bunch of Game Boy and Game Boy Advance there's ones I wasn't thinking that- of. Jim, that's exactly the what Tiger Electronic game. Shame count. on you. Yeah, any kind of well, no, it's got to be games like games, like not Tiger. But so no, we're not getting in that woods. But it doesn't matter. All right, it's just it's all for fun. This game What's is still score? very What's tight. What's the score? What's the score? Craig three, Jim four. Guys, we're closing in. Tying it's it up. A, it we're up almost right done. Here. All right, tying we're almost right done. We're very close. Tying it up. I like how he calls these up. quick games. Yeah, this is the yeah, last question. Is. We're done. This we're last question. I could tie it up. What if I tie it up? I have a tiebreaker. Question. I have a tiebreaker. Lies. If you tie it up, I am going to tie it up right here. All okay, right. So when you Not tie if. it up, I have a tiebreaker. All right. Okay. Just making so get, sure. Get ready. Here we go. All right. Remembering that you still have ten seconds, so no big deal. We don't have to get ready. How many in the final? I mean, oh, excuse me. Not final. What the fuck am I talking about? How many Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle toys were in the entire line that was started in the eighties? Holy shit! Uh. Yep. Yeah, it was a lot. So. You know, feel feel free to guess a big number here, but how many toys overall was the original '80s toy line composed of? And you got three, two. Wait, the original '80s or from '80s till now? How no, many? No. Not the '80s, 80s till the, now. The initial Playmates run. The initial toy run. Yeah, the one that ended in dinosaurs. <laughs> so, all right, pencils down. This is just a guess, folks. So, how many toys would you guess they had? Twelve hundred. Uh, all right, so that's twelve hundred from Jim. Craig, how many would you say? Um, four twenty. Four twenty. <laughs> uh, surprise, Craig! You did tie it up, motherfucker! I told you. Three hundred eighty-two figures came out in all. I told you. Wow, they feel like a lot more. 
Yeah, as a little yeah, dude. Goddamn, it was. This nuts. has got nothing to do with feelings. As a little bit of a trivia, they actually apparently only uh, didn't release sixteen. I, I'm only so. an expert at comics and shows. Actual <laughs> figures are a mystery to me. Well, that's why this is Teenage Mutant Number Turtles, baby. But get ready for this tiebreaker. I think this is where it's going to go uh, down. So tiebreaker question, and this is the, for the championship here. This is for the pervy poem. How many levels were in the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle arcade game, Turtles in Time? Oh, man. Ten seconds, starting now. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Pencils down. Please give me your best guesses, I gotta go gentlemen. With six. Craig says six. Jim, what do you say? Seven. With only one point difference, the winner is Jim. They had ten. How many questions are you going to ask about video games with Mister (laughs) Fucking Genius Video Game Guy next to me? Hey, I thought it was seven. I was way off. Why don't you ask some music fucking questions? (laughs) That's true. Who composed a score to? (laughs) Yeah. So uh, I guess Jim wins. Craig, you're writing that dirty poem. Oh, to clarify, give me, give me. Go ahead. To clarify, right, let's clarify. To this. clarify my irrational anger about that uh, uh-huh. number of years mirage uh, question was the the TN, the Ninja Turtle buyout by Viacom was actually in two thousand nine, uh-huh. but Larid of course had the right to keep making Mirage Turtles for uh, indefinitely, and the mm-hmm. last one he released was in twenty fourteen, which was the thirtieth anniversary. So as Mirage. Uh, uh, as a Mirage produced comic, like yes. according to Wikipedia, yes, that's why that 2014 made it 30 years. You got me again, Raven. Yup. Sorry, but you still came out smelling like roses, even though you fell in the shit. So yeah, yeah it's all okay. good, Video Craig. Uh, I'll expect uh, that poem to be posted. Sixty percent of uh, <laughs> of my questions will be about video games. Were they? Was that the number? You're very bad at numbers, yes. apparently. Yes. Because it was not sixty. Yes. All right, all right, I got your fucking poem right here. All right. Oh, no. I don't want it. You ready? I don't want it no, right now. No, I'm going to give it right here. Give it. Okay. It's going to be the greatest haiku about Savage Dragon. What is it? What's what does it have to be? What's it has the to be about sexual exploits. Yeah. Okay. Ready? Yeah, I'm listening. You ready? Yeah. Can I get a drum roll or something? <laughs> okay, here we go. Maxine likes green cock. Mm-hmm. State fair zucchini, if you please. Dragon Chowder Blast. <laughs> yeah, I can't do that. I'm real bad at haikus. See, you're way more of an expert at haikus than me, Craig. You know, Thank you. although you may have lost, it feels like ultimately you won. <laughs> Thank you. That was. I don't even know how many syllables that's supposed to be. Can I just five, say? 575, right? 575, yeah. is that how it works? A tear. You brought a tear to my eye. That was <sighs> beautiful poetry there you go wow i do commissions haiku commissions just hit me up on twitter i look forward to your burgeoning career as a an erotic haikuist well it's not burgeoning i've been one for a while under a fake name can i be honest that felt pro that felt very pro (laughs) guys i I think we uh we we still got a lot i think we're an hour into this we haven't even talked about the issues yet yeah, people love when we do that. Um, let's get into the meat and potatoes, why don't we? <laughs> yeah, let's get into meat and potatoes, because these are some urban legendy meat and potatoes, man. There's This is beefy, dude. Gary really fucking packed these fucking last three issues. Let's and talk Frank, about the covers. I mean, like, like, so we're gonna do twenty four, twenty five, and twenty six of Urban Legends, right? But let's right. let's just let's talk about all three covers, and then we'll just talk about the whole story as like one long thing. Right, sure. sure. I mean, these are all brand new covers because yep. we've never had these issues as an image comic before. Right. And to me, the interesting thing is where uh, Eric dropped off. Then we start getting uh, like other artists, yeah. and I th- I think they're still Larson centric. Like you got Nikos doing a cover, Nikos Kutsis, Kuts- who's the colorist and yep. also pencils a lot of his own stuff. But great, um, great cartoonist in his own right. You got Andy Kuhn. 
you know, regular contributor. Um, For, did Freak Force Volume 2. Yep. Uh, Fire Breather, who's crossed over with Savage Dragon. What's his character? Um, it's uh, Fire Breather. No, 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 no. I'm talking about uh, the guy in 250. Carl Cosmic. Carl Cosmic. That's not his character. That's Eric's. But I know. I'm just saying I associate uh, him Also, with Kuhn him. has been drawing the IDW Turtles like for yep, a while you're right. now. You're right. So yep. he's got that going on with him, too. Right. Yep. But, uh, man, just awesome. Awesome picks. Um, I think it was typical cool. Typical East Kevin Eastman covers, too. Yeah, which I think he did a really good job. Um, specifically, man, Jim, it's can't. It's a bad thing you can't see Doctor X. Uh, Kevin Eastman's rendition of Doctor X in his uh, enhanced cyborg suit is pretty gnarly. Nice. Uh, yeah, so I, is, I haven't been able to see any of these, unfortunately. Uh, Google I, it because it's great. What issue was yeah. that? Um, twenty uh, five variant. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, who is Lady Shredder? Andy's who is Lady Shredder cover is really good. Yeah, yeah. Um we also got a convention exclusive for a convention that Frank never got to go to because of COVID. Um so you get two Frank Fosco covers on 25. You know what's special about that convention cover for 25? Tell me, I don't know. So uh it's it's an homage to Jeff Matsuda who did the variant to the Image Comics Ninja Turtles number 1. Cool, man. I didn't know. <laughs> That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, and so since there was no convention, IDW dropped it on their website and it sold out in like minutes. Well, hell yeah, it's a great cover. Like Frank yeah. really fucking like knocked it out of the park. Um, yeah, and then on the last one, you got Andy uh, pitching in, and I think it's cool because Kevin Eastman kind of like, you know, he's just drawing his turtles again. Like that's uh, almost yeah, maybe it's like, it's like bringing them back to like their normal look, which right? Kind of closes out the series. Yeah. So man, oh, that Kun come to cover on twenty six is really good. Yeah, isn't it? Yeah, it's oh, a, it's almost a fire Komodo breather. It's almost, guy. it's almost a fire breather cover. Yeah, yeah, very good, dude. Um, so yeah, these covers are fucking great. Um, they're fantastic. Uh, really good. I mean, holy shit. Um, jump right in, Jim. Take us away on twenty four, man. So it, 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 we basically pick up a couple days after the uh, the birthday party episode, uh, ending of the of the last issue. And mm-hmm. Leo is pretty sure that Lady Shredder has to be uh, 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 Karai. Yeah, who they right. who they've encountered before, who is of course I believe Shredder's daughter. So she says. So she says, as as does Pimico, of course. Yep. And so he knows that this location is a safe house uh, that the Foot has controlled. Um, yep. Apparently, Raphael sold it while he was a uh, Shredder. But yep. Leo's pretty sure that this is where Karai is hiding. So Donnie hacked some websites and figured out that it was sold, but to a shell corporation. Yeah. And then there are ninjas on the roof, so that kind of seals that deal. Yeah, the foot. <laughs> the foot show up. <laughs> um. So Leo crashes in, but, oh man. All right, so he finds Karai but he finds Karai at a ne- sitting next to a hospital bed where her daughter uh Amai is in mm-hmm. a coma. She's brain yep. well she's brain dead. Right. There's no brain activity so she's just been vegetable vegetable state. Um and this of course um happened way way back in Ninja Trolls volume 1 according mm-hmm. to this issue 58. Right? So basically the reason why she's been out of the foot is because she's been here caring for her uh uh brain dead daughter. Right. Um, and meanwhile, back in the turtle base, actually, this is back at uh, must be in uh, Casey, Casey Jones', Jones apartment, apartment because they have a television, right. and right. Uh, a shadow is there. And uh, apparently, April is on Oprah Hawk and Mikey's book, <laughs> "A Rose Among <laughs> the Thorns," which will be brought up later. Uh, but something weird's going on with Donnie. He's kind of gone into like a. Uh, he's currently like trying to uh, go to the astral plane to find Splinter, correct? Who is also kind of in a coma right now. Yeah, he's because he's taken over it, by Chang, right? Well, he's getting yep. taken over by Chang. He's getting his life force drained out of him. Yeah, which explains um, Splinter just would fucking like fall over all the time in this series. Yep, and that's why he was like had a fucking ghost sucking his life out. Yeah. So oddly enough, it's Donnie doing this because you th- usually think of Leo as the more spiritual one. But I guess Donnie's as close as the only one they got because Mikey ain't, ain't going to do well, it. Well, 
don't forget, Donnie in this whole series was trapped in the astral plane for a while when the cyborg took over his body. Remember, the cyborg kept saying Donnie's dead. Oh, right? that makes really sense. Because it was really because he was stuck in the astral plane and the cyborg couldn't sense his life force. Right. Um, so he, throughout this whole series, he's been kind of stuck there. So he's kind of an expert, I think, in it now too. They're all scared of it anyway. They don't. None of them like it. But uh, Donnie's in the astral plane, and he finds Splinter, but he also finds that Chang has taken over Splinter's, basically controlling Splinter's astral form. So uh, Donnie tries to punch him out of Splinter, but that doesn't work as well as he'd hope. But meanwhile, back in the real world, some of the nanomachines of his uh, bio, his, uh, his uh, mechanical body get latched onto Shadow, yeah. and she can't get it off. So uh, Dr. X here comes up with a quick solution to uh, set off like an EMP burst. Right. Which uh, disables all electronics in the entire block, uh, including uh, Dr. X's, uh, his own cybernetic suit, but also Donnie. Mm-hmm. Uh, in fact, it's... His little Ultram suit. <laughs> yeah, his Ultram suit, yeah, yeah. But D- Donnie's um, um, cyborg parts are also rendered inert and start to, like, fall flake off, off, flake off, yeah. fall off of him. Right, and he's freaking out because uh, he, he has move, believed yeah. that they were keeping him alive, you know? He yeah. can't move. Yeah, he thinks he might die. Yeah, because right. the, the armor apparently is dying. So, uh, But then we cut back to uh, Karai and Leo, and Pimico comes in. And, okay, let's see if I can get this straight. Um, it's tricky, dude. These are, these are densely packed moments. <laughs> Sorry, I've, I've trying to remind myself. Because Karai, I guess... Anyway, either of you make any sense of this? Yeah. Go for it, Craig. Jump in there. Because so I like, struggle uh, a little Kimiko bit. or Karai, like... So, basically, Pimico is kind of like the bastard daughter of Shredder. And, and they reference Big Bang number 10. And this is kind of Karai just being like, you know, you're just like your dad, pride, greed, rage. You have a lot to learn. And the warlord Komodo kind of jumps into the scene with Lady Shredder. So it's like, oh, shit, Lady Shredder is totally different than, you know, Karai or whoever. Right. And so they kind of go through the rundown on uh, Pimico and her origin and basically it turns out her mother, Pimico's mother is a character called Headhunter who I think only shows up in Big Bang number 10 uh, the the Kid Galahad issue and and in that issue Kid Galahad is actually trying to track down Headhunter because Headhunter's been killing people as a bounty hunter he does never seen Headhunter before so he he's like staking he thinks is him out and turns out he thinks Shredder is the headhunter Oroko Saki and so he busts through a window and he goes to like save the chick that Oroko Saki's with in bed <laughs> but it's uh... and it turns out that he's busting the wrong guy the headhunter is the woman that he's in bed with and Oroko Saki escapes because headhunter was actually sleeping with him to actually assassinate him um, and so basically what they imply here is that in that night that that's when Headhunter was impregnated with Oroko Saki's uh, daughter, so uh, who's Pimiko. So it's kind of crazy how it, it, it kind of points to Big Bang 10, which is, you know, kind of an issue you didn't think twice about. And now it's got all these implications for this series. Worth mentioning that, like, they make no bones. I mean, in Big Bang 10, it's like, dude, that's a Rokosaki. Like, you see the yep. young turtles. They fish Galahad out of the sewers. So <laughs> Galahad runs away from Headhunter, I guess. And yeah. After he's caught by surprise, and he's brought up by, like, young turtles. Like, you know, they're like... Or they're teenagers. All right, yeah, they're I, like I, little I kids. figured out my confusion. Karai is not related to the Shredder. She is just a, 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 a trained a assassin foot. who took over... The Foot Clan in the Shredder role. Right. Right. So at this point, we know Pimico is. We know that Komodo took Pimico because 
he wanted to mold her into one of his like assassins because he's got like shredders like bloodline and stuff like that right well right she's she's like would be basically if he could get her under control she'd be like a fucking super ninja like clan komodo and like shredders blood like flowing through her veins basically so this this confirms that she is shredders daughter right here yes like like she's been saying all along like Yes, she is Shredder's she daughter, confirmed. Illegitimate kind of love, not even love child, because it was done during, like, a planned assassination attempt. Right, yeah. Um, and her mom was going to get rid of her, but, like, fucking Komodo just kept her, because he was like, yeah, she'll be useful. Does it ever say what happened to Headhunter, or no? It doesn't even... It doesn't go there, uh, other than just that she just disregarded Pimico. She didn't want her. Right, right. And so Komodo kept her because he's like, well, hell yeah, dude. I'll I'll take this ninja, you know. So at this point, we know, you know, Karai is there with her daughter on life support. We know Pimico now is Shredder. Uh, uh, Komodo, Warlord Komodo's back in the picture. But who the hell is this lady Shredder? We still have no idea. And she's standing side by side with Komodo. Right, that's still the mystery, like, at this point. Like, uh, what's funny is you learn Pimco. Gary does a really smooth trick here where you learn Pimco's history, but also, too, you're just basically, like, eliminating who Lady Shredder could be, like, just left and right. Right, right. And she keeps saying, still haven't figured out who I am, so the Turtles know who she is, apparently. And then she does something very interesting. She morphs her hand into, like, a fucking hammer. And at that point, the truth is a little more revealed. Oh, yeah. So she hammers. She hits Mikey's little metal nub. Uh, Leo. Leo. I'm sorry, Leo's. And so he's in pain. And then her hammer turns to guns, right? Like, almost yeah. like Super Patriot. Well, right, yeah. almost like a certain other turtle we've seen right? this entire time. Right. The ar- it's true. Her armor is, in fact, one of the uh, c- cybernetic, uh, whatever they're called, the uh, nano machines. Nano like machine. it's living, living metal. Yeah. From all the way back in issue one. Mm hmm. Uh, she, her, the armor itself is what's actually in control here. And it needed a host without a mind and without a will, so it kidnapped Lurch, Vanguard Lurch, which we saw in issue 14 yeah lurch went lurch Lurch went missing right right Right. so issue 14 johnny rayburn is fighting donnie and like fries the shit out of donnie and then escapes to back to out of space donnie's like half dead and they don't know what to do so lurch kind of jumps forward because at this point they're hanging out with vanguard and roxanne and lurch and lurch jumps forward the cyborg who was attached to Donnie at the time and thought Donnie was dead because Donnie was trapped in the astral plane left Donnie's body to attach to a new host, which was Lurch. He attaches to Lurch, and Lurch turns into this kind of like cyborg thing with wings and flies away. Right. And then comes to find out, you know, as the issues progress, Donnie's consciousness comes back, and now he's in his body with the robot armor, but the robot that was controlling him is now attached to Lurch. So he's got the cyborg suit, and he's got his own free mind. Meanwhile, the the cyborg guy who was controlling Donnie is attached to Lurch and out of the picture. Right. And that's the last we kind of saw. So Donnie's got free will. Lurch is gone with the armor. We haven't seen him until now. So the Shredder armor, the cyborg, and Lurch all standing there as a character. It's pretty cool. And I think the Shredder armor is just the cyborg morphing into it, right? Right. Yep. Just trying to be intimidating. But at any rate. And that cyborg is the same guy from issue one that and two that merged with Donnie. So he worked for King Komodo in the beginning. And it was one of King Komodo. Right. Because Warlord King, Komodo's creation. King, King Komodo was using them to try to acquire the turtles for his genetic research. Right. right, right. Wants to understand yeah, that, mutagen. He had that big lab, and the cyborg guys are one of his creations. And then, if you remember, I think it's issue two or three, they're like, cut funding. Those guys are a bunch of 
buffoons, you know. Right, yeah, they're like, man, they're losers anyway, let them die. So, meanwhile, that cyborg guy still works for King Komodo, so it's all making sense now. Yeah. It's all coming together, dude. It's all tying up. I love it. It's so cool. So, uh, back in, um, back in the, the apartment, uh, Donnie's in a bad way. His suit is continuing to fall off of him, uh, mm-hmm. because the armor is dead. And, uh, Mr. Uh, Dr. X is saying basically, um, that the armor has actually, it has not, hasn't been just keeping him alive. It's been preventing his body from healing. Right. And that in fact, underneath the armor, there is like his, uh, his shell has been growing back this entire time. Mm-hmm. There's signs of that happening. Um, uh, but the armor, I guess, isn't as dead as we thought because in the very end, it starts to come back to life and grab onto Dr. X or yeah, Dr. X. Yeah. It's seeking hosts like crazy. Yeah. It, like it, they, it did initially try to let, latch onto shadow. Well, that's why the EMP went off. Tried to latch to Splinter, you know. So, pretty much that's that for this issue. Um, I know we're not really doing blow by blows, but like I'd just be remiss if I didn't say that uh, Frank has some fucking absolutely hilarious turtle panels in here. I don't. Uh, I want to mention. I'm actually quite impressed with how much this looks like the old series. Yeah. He is. Yeah. I don't know if it is just his style uh, hasn't changed significantly since then, or if he was intentionally. You know, making it look like it used to, but it it it, it like there's hasn't missed a beat. It's the it's the same look. Yeah, he's emulating it like perfect. Um, the the panel where he's spitting out his spaghetti is fucking hilarious. The panel where he's like, "Who'd read a book, romance novel is written by someone who looked like me?" That is a funny fucking hilarious turtle like panel. So there's just some really funny panels in here. And, uh, Jim, you know, we were picking on Frank's women a little bit. I'm going to say uh, I think that's an area where he didn't dial it back to the past. I think the women look better in this issue than probably they have in the whole oh, series. Oh, good point. Yeah, yeah. They don't look like boxes as much anymore. Yeah. Like, no, I'm saying, like, look how good, like, Karai looks this whole episode. Yeah. Like, she's got Asian features and everything. Like, it's really good. Like, it's really, like, I think that's one thing where he didn't like matched his like looks in the past i think uh what's her little what's a daughter's name casey's Sh- daughter shadow shadow i think yeah. shadow looks better too um yeah overall like very awesome sweetheart awesome fucking stories crazy revelations like fucking wild and hey baby that's 24 i think we should jump right into 25 let's do it jim take it away choom 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 um so it's great yeah, isn't it yeah the, yeah the 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 um the letter the lettering is very good it's it's it, it the lettering looks almost as good as like a regular issue of savage dragon or even back in the 90s the 90s turtles uh whoever's doing this lettering is pretty good adam gazowski just shining like just better and better with each issue oh yeah colors, the colorist. Are, colors are great but it especially probably helps that this was drawn with color in mind which is exactly be a huge difference Yep. Um, Bingo. So yeah, this opens up in the in the in the in the hospital. Hold on. Can I tell you one thing that that I did notice? I mean, I, I guess let's. let's no, do the first I I page. said hold on because there was noise. Oh, sorry. So if you want someone to say something, go ahead. Start now. I was gonna say one thing I did notice, and you guys tell me if you notice is the pages seem a little shrunk. Yeah, that's I know. I'm, I'm glad you mentioned it. Yeah, my issue the whole time, and the last issue didn't have that uh, thing going on. But almost no. every oh, page, yeah, there, there is a cropping issue here. Yeah, I, my, seemed, my digital copy has very large gutters. I think someone made an error. The physical yeah, copy weird. has them too, dude, and oh. it's it is weird because, like for instance, there's a good like half inch at the top and bottom. Of each yeah. page. Yeah, it's weird. Yeah, th- this first it. page that you can tell the top panel was supposed to be full bleed. Yeah. Th- yeah this is exactly. this is cropped wrong, and it appears to be issue-wide. That is baffling. Yeah. I will even go so far as to say that I think this first page would have worked better as a splash and was probably intended to be a splash. Well, that's, what, that's what Jim was just the saying. The top panel is supposed to be full bleed to the edges. It's, yeah. it's supposed yeah. to be z- zoomed in. 
Very weird. Yeah, um, I'm glad you mentioned that because I was thinking it the whole time I was reading this episode or this issue. If uh, Frank Fosco, if you're listening, uh, write in and tell us uh, what happened there. Yeah, let us know. Well, this seems like a production error on the IDW side. Oh yeah, it wouldn't have been. He's, it's clearly drawn. Like here's yeah. the thing: this you want to know the telltale sign? I'll tell you what it is. It's word balloons. Like when your word balloons have like that much distance between them and the edge, yeah. somebody didn't quite. It was drawn with the original proportions in mind. Somebody didn't stretch these to the margins properly, because I'm sure Frank drew this like to fill a normal page. Absolutely, so. yeah. So at any rate, uh, yeah, I'm Still glad great. you. Ma- it's just noticeable. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that. Um, back to the issue: the Lady Shredder blasting away with those sweet ass cyborg guns, and uh, we get to see that uh, old Lady Karai is uh, not just uh, oh, hasn't she, been sitting she, there. She's not really an old lady. She's pretty young. Yeah. She's not been sitting there becoming a withered hag. Yeah, she's pissed because uh, Lady Shredder is shooting bullets in her in her uh, daughter's uh, hospital room. Right. Um, but it's revealed that, in fact, the body in the bed, the brain-dead body, has been lurched the entire time. twist a Rooney, dude. twist a Rooney. I was like, what in the fuck? What? Because when she knocks right. off the head, it's her daughter under the Lady Shredder armor. Right. So the, the uh, nanosuit, ha- at some point, decided it needed a real body instead of the, uh, the lurch body. And so it swapped with the brain-dead body. Yeah, Lurch's and then DNA they up Lurch. Yeah, Lurch's DNA was a problem. It was building an immunity to the nano machines. Right. Cuz it's alien had... technology, so that makes sense. Right. So she had to find a new host and uh Arai or Amai, Amai. Amai uh was the perfect candidate because her body was alive but her mind wasn't. Which is a total mind f to yeah. um Karai. Yeah, Karai's not happy about she's... this seeing her daughter alive but yet not her daughter yeah talking and everything think how fucked up that would be it's a crazy plot twist dude that is one of the crazy i was like what in the fuck yeah it took me a second of course and karai confronts lady shredder about it and because karai i mean uh because lady shredder has no memories of who she was just stabs her in the stomach (laughs) and slaps her in the face well, it's funny because when the helmet first came off, I literally thought it was Lurch just fucking with her for a minute. Right. But, uh, of course, you know, again, it's not. So I just, again, just great writing, dude. Just great. Yeah. Sorry. Keep going. The slap. Isn't that kind of insulting? Like, yeah. she just gets slapped. You got stabbed down. in the stomach. Now it's just insult. Yeah. Well, it's she's returning the slap that she, that, uh, well, I guess not. It, it was Pimico that got slapped by... Karai in the issue before, so I don't know what I'm talking about. That's okay. I will say Frank did an awesome design on Lady Shredder. I think it's cool. I love the ski feet. Like, kind of like yeah. the way the feet are blades. That's so <laughs> yeah. cool. And he's really selling the shit out of Lurch. Like, the way Lurch just kind of is, like, hunched over and stuff in that hospital yeah. gown. Oh, it's so good. So, it's and it's it's pretty funny, because they get out on the roof, Leo, uh, Raph, and Pimico, and uh, Leo's having trouble because his... Uh, his, uh, the cap on his hand got smashed by a hammer, but it's, like, more painful than usual. And they're having trouble getting it off because it got bent. Uh, so Lurch kind of morphs into, like, a hulking-type character who looks a lot like... I forget his name, but he was a, he was a vanguard bad guy who turns into an ally. Oh, a muck? A uh, muck, yeah. I think he looks a bit like a muck except purple. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, they managed to get the, uh, get the um, cover cap off his off hand. The cap off yeah. his hand. And it turns out he actually has fingers again. He's got a little hand. Which I don't understand. How does that work? Well, um, Is that the mutagen? It's two things. It, it's not clearly explained here, uh, but I think it's a combination of their mutagen and also reptiles' natural healing abilities. And the funny thing is... Although turtles don't regenerate. But Well, here's the funny thing. The funny thing is, is that that concept is explained in the fan comic. And okay. not and not really explained here, and that's one of the. It's interesting you should bring that up because it's funny. And for the listeners, you say fan comic. We're talking about the two issues that, that we'll touch on. Wrote. Yeah, we're going to yeah, talk we'll, about them later. Yeah, we're going to talk about them later. But like, that's funny. Like, I'm glad you said that because Craig, that's one of the very first moments where I was like, "Whoa, the parallels here between this and that." 
It's very interesting. So, yeah, he's growing his hand back, and the explanation Jim just gave is a little bit more explored in the fan comic. It's nuts. Yeah. So, at any rate. But, uh, so we head back to uh, Mikey in the apartment, and Mikey has a huge cat. This cat is big. <laughs> it's a big, fat boy. <laughs> but um, Splinter wakes up, but he's acting weird. He's trying to, like, run away and escape. Mm-hmm. Only it turns out it's not Splinter at all. It's Chang. It's Chang in Splinter's yep. body. We get to see Doctor X's sweet new yeah, suit. Yeah. Uh, Dr. I X, love when he opens that. Doctor X shows up. Uh, it turns out he's a giant mech suit now, and uh, Chang um, has no prayer. Can I just say that uh, continuity wise, it actually makes nothing but sense that he would redesign the armor that way, because the only reason the Ultram originally were in the torsos was so that they could have a rubber head yeah. to interact with people while they were disguised on Earth. Yeah. So the fact yeah. that they had him redesign his thing where he's like not trying to hide who he is, so he's just up in the head part, is great. Yeah, it's a great, great design, actually. It's a great touch. It's great. At any rate, keep going. So, yeah, Chang is uh, stuck in Splinter's body, and he's desperate to get his own body back. So they have, like, an uneasy truce to have Chang lead them to where his body could be. Right. Because they're still tethered. They have that astral chain. It's kind of like how the turtles were aware that of each other and stuff. They still know. Yeah. And uh, then we go to this mysterious lab where we see Chang in a tube, and also Lady Shredder and... Uh, Komodo are here, mm-hmm. and um, Lady Shredder's talking about how Chang's uh, mindless body is actually a perfect uh, spare host body, right? That, that he might that the armor might need in the future. So he's gonna. Mm-hmm. So that's why it's in a tube on life support. It's just to keep these spare bodies around mm-hmm. uh, for for future need. Crazy back the tanks. Yeah. But we even have a little bit of a plot, like uh, an easy alliance here, because you know Komodo tells her, he's like, "Nah, man, you know, remember these are my soldiers. You know, I guess these are going to be my soldiers. Don't you forget it." And in fact, they have also grabbed Karai's body. She's also in a tank, getting, uh, I presume, getting healed for future usage. Mm-hmm. Uh, so basically, the plan here is to create a cyborg army, right? Um, cyborg army and also mutants, like a combo army. Um, the idea is that Komodo is going to use these, this army to like, actually, I'm not even sure what he really wants to use them for. I guess take over the foot. Yeah. This motherfucker's into all kinds of ill shit. If you think about it. Yeah. Um, and in fact, uh, he's currently working to, uh, He's still looking to unleak, unlock the secrets of Mutagen, which he's hoping yep. to get out of one of his the, the larger mutated Komodo dragons that survived. Not just anyone, though. It's his brother. <laughs> oh, is it his brother? No. 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 It says he's we're harvesting his brother. We're harvesting samples oh, from my I don't brother. Think, I don't think that's... Because he shares his DNA. Yeah, that's not literal. Oh, is it not? All right. No. Well, I'm a dumbass because guys. because he injected him with... Because he's because he's a Komodo dragon mutant like him. Okay, sorry, I'm a stupid ass. Well, I told you this was really densely packed. <laughs> I was getting dumbfounded. Keyword is densely dense. Ten toes. All right, so <laughs> back in the back in the apartment, Leo and Ralph Raph have shown up finally, and uh, they are being reintroduced to Doctor X, who's got his new exosuit, which apparently is a combination of the. U- Utram technology and also the nanobots, which is why yes. it looks the way it does. He's Fucking using the. Awesome. He's basically starting to like use like like a directed EMP blast to get the rest of the armor off of Don. Mm-hmm. Uh, so he hits him with one last blast, and like most of the rest of the armor finally schleps off. Mm-hmm. Although uh, Donnie still has a bit still in him, but that'll come on its own. It's finally out. It's finally dead, and he is going to make a full recovery i think Mm-hmm. we're starting to see we're moving towards that you know sort of reboot of the reset of the turtles like for the next series yeah we're closing this out Mm-hmm. you're feeling the finality i think although i find it very funny how the tur- how uh raf comments that uh don is naked because <laughs> he doesn't have his belt he doesn't have his belt on right <laughs> And then the, I'm sorry again, the panel of him being like, how do I look? It's so funny, dude. 
<laughs> it's good. It's good. It also a nice touch of just the cat being so loving. Like, uh, it's just good stuff. This is really good. I'm sorry. I know we're not really doing that with these turtles, but man, I just got to say this is just really good. I love Dr. X when his little, like, shield thing comes down. Oh, yeah. He's That's got the cool. full armor face plating and all that. It's badass. Yeah, so, yeah Dr. X is going to stay behind and protect Shadow in the, in the in the apartment, but so is Casey in April. And Pimico apparently has. We've remembered that there are all these other ninja chicks out there, so she rounded them up and tied them all up, and right. dumped them, dumped them here so that they can't. Yeah, it kind of closes them out. Yeah, yeah. So we don't have to worry See. about where they are. I, I find the little sound effects funny. It's like Frank just scribbled them kind of fast, like the <laughs> click clack, the wump. word zip or and the full wump. <laughs> well, there's a letter on this issue. I'm not sure if Frank did these. I think he did. I think it's part of the art. Could be. I mean, it definitely looks different than the usual kind of digital sound effects you if usually see. If you look at, you look at like the ink lines and stuff, like on the full lump, they kind of go over the letters. It looks like it's drawn by Frank yeah. right into it. Question, guys. Just I don't know, throwing it out here. Do you think when Casey and April mention their new lawyer, um, who promises to get Casey's reward money back, which is kind of like funny little closure on that? Do He's a you? Real shark. Well, do you think that is a reference to Daredevil? Yeah, it's Matt Murdock. It's got to be. It's, it's got to be, right? Although he says he's a real shark. So maybe it's, maybe it's Mako? No, Mako's not a lawyer. <laughs> yeah, it's got to be a Daredevil reference. I think they're just referring to the fact that Matt Murdock is a lawyer. I, everyone knows the Matt Murdock. Everyone knows the Daredevil turtle connection. I just, if that was a Daredevil connection, I love how they put it in there. I think it's cool. Uh, so they put Chang in, um, Chang, who is in Splinter's body, they put Chang on a leash, and he races through the sewer, leading the turtles on a, to uh, Komodo's uh, lab, which we will uh, find about next issue. Right. I love when they do those, like, kind of contrasts with, like, the totally darked out, like, blacked out turtles. It looks cool. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's really Silhouette. Cool and, and but they put just enough spotlight on like their 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 their, their front shells and their masks. Yeah, it's pretty funny. Pretty fun. Yeah, Raphael still has got his black mask, so it doesn't really show. I love it, dude. Yeah, it's so good. Uh, guys, this was good. This is a good one. I just I'm still like at this point I'm like riding high. I'm really feeling this shit. Then we get to the final oh. issue. Big 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 finale. Mm-hmm. This Get first ready. page is holy fucking shit. Yeah, dude, that's the one. Should have been the cover. Should have been the nah, cover. Right, on the cover. This is right where it needs to be. That's good. That's a good one. I don't know what the plans really are or aren't, but uh, I know Frank had mentioned that maybe there'd be a poster of this at some point. Who knows? But man, it should be because that is a fucking killer. I would even go so far as to say that could be an iconic turtles image. Yeah. Yeah, that's good, dude. It is probably the single best image of the entire series, and that's saying a lot because there yeah. are a lot of really good images, a lot of good drawings in this series. Yeah, a lot of good yeah, cartooning. I, I, I would put it up there with like that cover with Donnie with the Casey mask on. Yeah, you mean Raph? I'm sorry, Raph. I keep doing that. It's okay. You know what? Um, this is funny that they are uh, infiltrating, and I just laugh at some of the comedy because, uh, you know, so much for stealth mode. Hey, we're only the diversion. Like you would say that out loud, you know? <laughs> <laughs> hey, we're a diversion. Look over yeah. here. <laughs> look at this diversion. <laughs> we're diverting you. Don't look over there. I'm punching you now. Yeah. Interlopers. So uh, yeah, they who says that interlopers, people who are very proper in the way they speak, professionals mm-hmm. like Ninja. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right, so uh, we get a big fight scene in a warehouse. Uh, Chang Chang is still leading them on, uh, but during the fracas, uh, Chang takes off his uh, baby harness and t- and runs off. Gonna be honest, this issue seems a little scooched into the middle too unnecessarily uh, less so it, it the full bleed, so. the full bleed on the first page is correct but the full bleed on the second page is not right i'm just saying i feel like you could have pushed this one further on yeah out. It, it's, it's very strange i don't know why this happened 
Yeah, be brave. Be brave, IDW. Push this on out to the F- edge. Fix this. Fix this in the trade. Don't be scared. But uh, nevertheless, sorry. Keep going. So we are we are in it now. So uh, Komodo comes out with his foot ninja backup, um, and Pimico picks a fight directly with uh, with uh, with uh, Komodo, mm-hmm. and they're gonna have it out. But it turn uh, then she gets ambushed by the other um, mutant Komodo dragon. Wait, can can I just roll? Hmm. I just want to pay attention to one one panel that's really cool, on um, the page where she's about to. Well, I guess you're talking about it now, but when she's facing Komodo, and the turtles kind of run by him right into the ninjas. Yeah, How right. Cool is that with the blood oh, splatter. Oh yeah, fantastic! Like they're just crashing into those fucking ninjas. Sorry. Con- continue. Oh, Very good. Uh, but the Komodo dragon, um, so Komodo, Komodo orders the Komodo dragon to kill her, but he refuses. And the reason is, is that she was the one who found him wounded after his fight with Leonardo and nursed him back to health. And Komodo dragon, uh, uh, warlord Komodo will, is frustrated that he won't, uh, obey him. And apparently when the mutant Komodo dragon was injected with, um, Komodo dragon, uh, Jesus, these names. <laughs> King Komodo, when, when this Komodo dragon was injected with, uh, em, with, uh, with uh, King Komodo's DNA, he right. actually managed to like get all of his like inherited his mental abilities, like his mental yeah, like ability his, to control lesser creatures. Yeah, his mind control powers. Yeah, his right. mind control powers over like other beasts, and somehow he's like become more powerful than 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 King Komodo himself. And well, King Komodo's was like he could control lesser beasts, right? So, yeah. so the implication here is that he he became He's a, a lesser, lesser beast. beast. To Komodo, yeah, he to be- the actual Komodo, right? He became superior to the original guy, and uh, so the original gets turned into an overly large Komodo dragon, but not a not a gigantic mutant one. His primitive backwards form, hands. yeah, backwards hands. That's true. <laughs> But, I love uh, the faces on that page. I I love Ki- uh, Warlord Komodo's face. It's so distinct. Yeah, you know, it's almost like one of those Kirby type faces. Yeah, mm-hmm. well, he's got a potato head. Yeah, it's neat. I like it. It's good cartooning. Agreed. Agreed. Um, who we got here? Donnie and Leo have found all the t- all the people in the tanks. Mm-hmm. Uh, so they have this um, antidote that uh, Doctor X has whipped up that is supposed mm-hmm. to kill all the. Uh, Nano machines that are in that are infecting all these people. So the I like that Frank takes the time to draw a French drain. Oh yeah, is that what that's called? A French drain? <laughs> I'm pretty sure. I'm not a fancy. Home, I'm not a homeowner. Yeah, I was gonna say fancy homeowner homeowner talk. <laughs> you know, um, are you talking? So just for us dumb fucks, you're talking about the one on uh, the very splash page, the beginning where the turtles are in silhouette looking at the tubes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Just curious. Yeah. That's cool. Little, like, I don't know if it's cool. I was just trying to be a wise ass about it. But <laughs> it's okay. No, there's lots of nice touches in here, dude. So apparently, Sorry. all these bodies are brain dead because apparently this process of killing the nano machines is really painful. So Donnie is a uh, pretty ha- pretty stoked about that. Um, they find Chang's body, and unfortunately, um. No, not unfortunately. Chang, Chang believes his body's dead, but Mikey is pretty sure that's not true. So he breaks out the breaks it open, and uh, the Chang body gets up, and he's, of course, Splinter is inside it. Mm-hmm. But of course, since um, so Chang and Splinter's body is going to fight Splinter and Chang's body, right. uh, but notices immediately <laughs> that he's got a problem because he transferred all of Splinter's life essence into his body. So Splinter is way stronger than Chang is currently. So uh, Splinter whoops Chang's ass mm-hmm. and does a mind meld to swap their bodies back. But it's not a good. It's not a, actually a swap because Chang is still lost in the astral plane. Yeah, basically Splinter just gets his body back and Chang's stuck. Yep. Right. Ch- Chang, no. Chang is lost in the astral plane forever, but Splinter gets back into his body. 
quick aside, how crazy would it have been for both of them had they made out at that point? Uh, I mean, think about it. He was in his body, he was in his body, but they're just both, like, smooching away. Uh, um, It'd okay. have been a crazy you got, thing. You got something wrong with like, that. <laughs> <laughs> Not sure why either of them would be into that very much. I'm just saying, plot twist. I they know. both if, kiss if I... because they think, this will never happen again. How wild would that be? And they hate it. They don't like it. I don't know if I... Would you do that in that situation? I can't imagine another person stealing my body that would make me feel that way, but maybe I would. Who knows? I don't know. If I if I was in a, if I was a giant rat and I found myself in a in a younger human body, I'd probably want to stay. Yeah. Right. Oh well. Remember though, guys, that uh, Mirage Splinter is, was always a rat. Oh it, right. It's right, not. Right. It's not a eighties cartoon. Well, wouldn't he want to be a human? No. Because remember that cartoon Splinter wanted to. They were that was the that thing. Was a passionate no. Well, no, no. this no. Because here, here's the thing: is that what's funny is my brain went there too. I was like, wait a minute, why wouldn't he want to be a man? He always wanted that in the cartoon. And then I had to remember. I was like, oh, wait a minute. Mirage Splinter was always a rat, so being a rat is his normal state. So of course he's not going to want to be I don't a know, fucking. I, dude. I was thinking more like why? Why doesn't he want to be younger? Because he's Splinter, dude. He's honorable. He just wants to, like, get back in his own body and just be an old fucking man drinking tea with his sons. I guess. Plus, you have no guarantee Chang won't just, like, yeah, pop I think, in I your think, head in the I, astral plane. Also, I think Chang was going to die anyway because I think his body was dying. Right. Because uh, I think he immediately dies. Not because he... Also... I was just saying, because he died, that's why Chang couldn't get back in his body, because his body was dead. Right. Also, comics. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's fun. It's all fun stuff. We're just nerding it up, guys. Just a couple of nerds dorking it away. Um, man, this Lady Shredder attack scene, she's just going for it, you know? Chonk. Mm-hmm. But, hey, them turtle boys don't cut her no slack. Where have I heard that before? I'm just saying I love this action. That's all. Um, I think it's kind of cool that they are, uh, you know, having you get a shredder fight. Like, think about, like, Gary pinned this to culminate in a shredder fight, in a way. Turtles versus Shredder, man. It's classic TMNT. But it's, you know, also with a twist that it's not. I'm just saying, man, fucking awesome. Awesome writing. Loving it. Um, so the fight kind of stalemates, uh, so, uh, Lady Shredder decides she's going to unleash the cyborg army to, uh, kill these turtles, only to find out her cyborg army has already been killed. Right. So, uh, that sucks for her. (laughs) Uh, so they wind up beating her by spraying the nanite, uh, antidote directly in her face. So she gets defeated with uh, aerosol. Yes. By Dr. X's little concoction, right? Dr. X made aerosol application of the antidote, and the panel of them standing around Lady Shredders just spraying her is so fucking funny. I love it. (laughs) It's the funniest conclusion to a fight ever. Because, like, on the previous page, you've got them really having, like, classic, like, Shredder Turtle action. Yep. Like, you know, swords and bow staffs and, like... Then you flip it, and, like, dude, they just, like, like bug sprayer, like, pssst. God, so funny. At any rate, Amai fucking hits the ground, and they just let her die. They're like... Well, she was already dead. Yeah, she, she, she was, well, she was, she was brain dead, so without the, without the, um... Oh, split... Actually, okay, this is actually a weird scene, because, okay, so... Mikey is wondering if they need to put her back on life support, but Splinter makes the decision that no, let her die. Right? Yeah. Splinter's like, sometimes we must use euthanasia. <laughs> yeah. Splinter <laughs> kind of. Sons. Splinter really should have consulted with Karai about this. Doctor Death. <laughs> exactly. He's not. You're, uh, you're not their. You're not her guardian, Splinter. This is not your call to make. I Splinter noticed. Splinter Kavokian. <laughs> I noticed her. Please do not resuscitate tattoo, my sons. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, Splinter making that call, dude. <laughs> but they do find Karai still alive in her tube. 
Uh, but mm-hmm. then they get then they get surprised because uh, Komodo and Pimico walk up, mm-hmm. and they're all confused. Why the heck is Komodo and Pimico still teaming up? But it turns yeah. out this Komodo is the other Komodo dragon, has the ability to shapeshift between uh, monster form and human form, or monster yeah. form and, yeah, in human form. Right. And we, and we see that Pimico has driven a sword directly through the original Komodo. Right, so He dude. is dead. Fucking brutal, right? Just stabbed him in the head. Solves that problem. Yeah. So no sequel for yeah. you. They're gonna go. Done. They're gonna go back to Japan, and they're gonna take uh, Karai with them to recover. And the plan right. is that they uh, they haven't decided whether to take on the Foot Can Foot Clan or just run Komodo Industries and just make a ton of money. Yeah, just get rich. Uh, it's kind of funny. Like it really worked out for old Pimico, huh? Yeah. To take. To take care of that sewer creature <laughs> that uh, was later able to morph into King Komodo. <laughs> yep, it all co- all works out. Yeah, really lucky. Um, I think uh, it's funny. Look, Leo looking at his uh, like gimpy hand. It's a little bit bigger, but like shout outs to Adam for making it like it's green, but just a little like lighter green. Right. It's cool, dude. I don't know. Nice little touch. Um. And I yeah because that that Komodo when they touch on it he's the one that actually bit off Leo's hand too right yeah Leo's like wanting some revenge for a second my favorite bit is when he morphs from uh, Komodo dragon to human form uh, Donnie calls him a show off because they got to <laughs> stay turtles yeah hmm. so it all ends um, they all go home in a limo. In the very final page, we see the turtles going to uh, April's upstate farmhouse. Right. In in Northampton. Yeah, Northampton, wherever that is. Uh, yeah, I guess that's north of the city. It's Western Mass. I've been there. Oh, it is in Mass? Times. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's where the, the Eastman and Lard were from, right? Well, that makes is sense. Is that it? Sure yeah, from. that makes sense. Pretty sure, yeah. Oh, well, okay, that helps it make sense. Um, Got to well, be honest, guys, did not see this coming didn't think it was going to end this way was very shocked felt abrupt it is a very abrupt ending however it is very interesting that this panel yep. in, this panel in particular oh yeah uh mm-hmm. ties into volume four because that's where this series starts is there oh are, okay they, i thought you're going a different way yeah no the the, the series there is another way there's there's there's, but, but series four but it ties into that too but th- this this specifically is supposed to dovetail this into Volume four, nice. Basically, dude. The volume four of them hiding out. Kind well, they're of not hiding out. It's just that they've out. been living up in that Northampton uh, for a few years. They've been out of the city, and that's kind of gotcha. where it all kind of leads out of. Um, it is interesting though that, um, I mean, it's implied that because Leo and Donnie are healing, that Raph's eye is probably going to heal back too. Sure. Eventually, although it is not shown. Yeah, right. Although it is interesting to see that uh, Donnie still has his uh, steel shell. Well, you want an incredibly subtle piece of storytelling as Raph's not wearing his headband. That is true. He's not. So you kind of got to assume that there's a reason for that. It's like, a, you know, which again, we'll touch on later. But yeah, very subtle in this. Like, uh, I He's will got s- a crazy axe on his shell. Too. He sure yeah, does. I, I was going to ask you guys about that. Like, is there something to that I missed? No, I think Raph just likes weapons. Okay, yeah. And it's also a little fucked up. Mikey's cat has a dead rat. (laughs) Don't you think? I don't know. I don't think it's Mikey's cat. I'm pretty sure it's Master Splinter's cat. Well, that makes it more fucked up. Yeah. (laughs) You imagine if your cat had a little human hanging from its mouth? You'd shit. (laughs) I sure would. So (laughs) so I think we should talk about this overall. How do you guys feel about the series? Well, are you, you going to touch on this last page so that when we see it again? We are touching yeah. on it. We're touching on it right now, Craig. The touching well, just is book, happening. I'll just say bookmark that last page in your mind, dear reader. There's no point to talk about it now. We've got to get to it. Yeah, yeah, no. Bookmark it, dear reader, this last page on issue 26 because, oh boy, it going to matter later, right? Um, but overall, Jim, dude, man, I love being a turtle. This shit made me feel like a kid. I loved it. I haven't been into Turtles since I was a kid. I honest to goodness got out around the Super Nintendo era. 
um, after I think I remember Turtles Arcade or no 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 the third movie the third movie being where my turtle mania fell off well for a and, lot of people that movie's real bad right but <laughs> but it's kind of funny because like there have been many other chances to get into turtles and I just didn't take them so taking this turtles ride with you guys uh, was the first like major amount of Ninja Turtles like stuff that I had consumed in a long time and man I fucking loved it dude Gary and Frank knocked the fucking they knocked this out of the park Ninja Turtles are still cool they, 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 they are. have always been cool especially they the comic never, version the comic turtles have always been great they were never not cool it was me that was just, uncool yeah you know like I feel like it was a missed opportunity for me in the 90s like I I have like a bunch of turtle issues sporadic mm-hmm. that I bought here and there and back is just what I used you know thought looked cool. I remember going to my shop and like just digging through the bag issues and they'd have like a few different ones. You know, this is before the internet when you could just order whatever you wanted. You just got what was there, you know. Right. Like, it was one shop and I was like, "Oh, this looks cool," you know, and and I I have a bunch of random issues, but I never bought them off the stand for some reason. Um, and I feel like it's a missed opportunity. And I look back, I'm like, man, I, I would have really dug just collecting turtles. You know, I was kind of a Marvel zombie then. Yeah. So it was like, so was you know, I'm just going to collect Marvel. But man, like after reading this and even just the, the, the independent issues that I do have, uh, from back in the day, the Tundra issues, they're always like so much fun that yeah. I don't understand why I didn't collect them. Same here. Uh, I just regret it. I really do. Like, I really wish that I had read the black and white issues as they released. Yeah. Um, because I would love to own them. Like, man, there was this. This stuff was good. I was. I think there might there might have been some stigma of it being like the cartoon then too for like teenagers or something. Like, oh, I don't know. You know, like that's a sellout or something. You know what I mean? Like, I don't. Know. Meanwhile, I'm reading Marvel, but I don't know. <laughs> like, I don't know. If maybe because of the cartoon. Like. I don't know what it is. So, before we get into the uh, big last bit, we should talk about the 30th anniversary right. story. Um, so, back a few years ago, I think in 2014, um, it was the 30th anniversary of the Ninja Turtles. And so, IDW decided to get it, do an anthology, which basically would represent the four major uh, Ninja Turtles uh, comics. Uh, mm-hmm. The original, original Turtles, uh, Turtles Adventures from Archie, uh, Volume 3, um, Image Turtles, and finally Volume 4, Mirage Turtles. Mm-hmm. Uh, for what's relevant to us, uh, oh, and also the IDW Turtles, they, they also had a story. Mm-hmm. All right, so, like, all, all the major ones. So, the... Sorry, the Volume 3 image stuff brought back uh, Gary Carlson and Frank Fosco. This was the first time they had re- they had uh, reunited to do Turtle stuff since the since the series had ended. And, of course, they didn't have room to, like, conclude the story. So what they did was they told kind of a, kind of a tales of story. Now, what's interesting is because this predates the Urban Legends revival by many, right. many years... The story right. written here doesn't seem to fit in anywhere because this story picks up Donnie is still a cyborg, but Mikey has written a second book, which right. absolutely had not happened at the end of Urban Legends that we just read. Right. But this this story is intended to clean up at least one other uh, plot thread. Back mm-hmm. when back when the very first issue uh, happened, there were three cyborgs that attacked the turtles. And we've accounted for two of them. One bonded to Donnie. The other became Lady Shredder, although we wouldn't know that yet. Uh, No, no, that's not true. No? The one that bonded with Donnie later on became Lady Shredder. Did it? Yeah, it explains that it escaped. and started by attaching to Lurch. Yep. Oh. Yeah. The other the other guys. I mean, it's not it's not like we're trying to track like who survived or anything because it's kind of explained. Like so, they 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 just kind of disappear. But the one guy that this book's about, like basically in the first or second issue, they totally destroy him. Right. Like, so you think he's destroyed? It's not like left hanging like where he is, and that's where you find out he really survived. 
but barely, right? <laughs> right. Like, you know, like, kind of. I think it's cool that Dr. X is in a very Krang-like apparatus in this. Um, I think that was nice. Uh, I just think the it's... the little legs. Yeah, yeah, just nothing but legs, which, you know, again, we didn't see him in that in any of the things. It's also we get to see him in a doctor role, which when I very first read this, because as you said, Jim, in real time, um, this came out before the Urban Legends. Yes. So I read... I read this without the knowledge, and so I didn't realize that Dr. X was literally an actual physician. Uh. So it's just kind of like this, it's going back to this for this FinCast was actually awesome because I actually had, even as short as the seven pages is, I had a new appreciation for this backup. Right. Yeah. It's better than, it's better than I thought is what I'm saying. Ah, I see. Because you have Cause context. Because I did. Yeah, I didn't get as much out of it when I read it the first time as like reading it now. I'm like, oh yeah, okay, all so right. This is the cyborg that they basically messed up, and then the head blew up and scarred Donnie. Uh, it scarred Raphael, and then I guess the rest of his body escaped, and he regenerated a head or something. Turns out he was using the life force of a raccoon. Right. That it must have found in the in the sewers, and it's basically like a giant parasite on the raccoon. Right. And that's yeah. kind of how it ends. It's not really like a, it doesn't really close up anything. It's just a way to show some action on this little like anthology. Yeah, and I got a good feeling that this is what led to Urban Legends, uh, get, happening because this came out, and then a couple of years later they announced the Urban Legends. I'm I'm still surprised that Urban Legends happened. Like I feel like there wasn't that much demand, really. Maybe I'm wrong. And you just never see those you never see these things happen. And so I just remember when we got the news, my mind was blown and it really seemed to have gone by so fast, you know. I mean like it, might, done. it might have been a case. I mean, IDW has been reprinting Ninja Turtle comics for a long time. It's possible yeah. that these have simply run out of stuff to reprint. And this was in the hopper. So they figured if they're going to reprint this, they might as well finish it. And that's yeah, I sort mean, of... We talked a little bit about it. It does make sense. I mean, probably a lot of people that are into Turtles now where Turtles are kind of gaining back popularity than more than the nine, you know, the late 90s yep. have never read these issues. And it's like, here, it's 20, you know, 23 issues done that you don't have to really pay for. Right. You just got to pay for the printing. And, the uh, and then we can close it up, and so you can get new readers, old readers, re excited, you know, and and make a quick buck off of it, and not really put much into it. There's also the Walking Dead Deluxe factor, uh, where they got to just basically slap colors on existing yeah, work, yeah, yeah, and it will be by many readers perceived as an upgrade. Also new, because like, a lot of people didn't read the original, right. Right, absolutely. Right. So you get a low cost series to put out. Yep. All you gotta do is pay your colorists. And I don't think that I, I think people are more open to it now than they were when it first came out. Oh, in yeah. terms of how shocking some of it is. We're in a completely different world with turtles, so absolutely. Yeah, I think it's uh I I do think it's uh probably just it was a smart move man i mean finish this series like for fuck's sake take that low-hanging fruit like if you've got this series here finish it so yeah very cool and hey guess what idw if you're listening if anyone who knows anyone at idw is listening i would also go back and double dip if you did it all black and white in a compendium yeah yeah i t i totally would i would totally double double dip for a black and white edition especially the, especially the last three issues yeah, I'm shocked yeah. they didn't offer that. That would have been like easy money for like long term, long time Ninja Turtle right. fans. So just saying. So we got one last thing to talk about. We're not going to spend a ton of time on this. It's just a very uh, interesting oddity. So back in 2011 and 2012, uh, a, a fan, I suppose, of the Volume Three Ninja Turtles took it upon themselves to basically create an ending for this series. Now, what's interesting is they their name, I believe, was uh, Andrew Modine, who I know nothing mm -hmm. about, uh, and they teamed up with an artist named uh, Arzenti 
Duboskov. Mm-hmm. You're doing it. Sure, du- I'm pretty sure Dubikov. you butchered that name. But yeah. It's Dubikov, yeah. Means. But they went, instead of just kind of like doing it themselves, they went the one step further to actually get input from Frank Fosco and Gary, uh, Gary Carlson. Uh, they credit Fosco. Fosco apparently drew a uh, couple pages, three or four pages for each. Uh, issue. Yeah, I, I think that some of it was like pinups. Yeah, I think it, I also believe that may be the case. They might have been using existing pinups or commissions, that sort of yeah. thing. But uh, they use Gary Carlson's notes. Uh, but also, uh, former co host and uh, friend of the show, Adam Pruitt, apparently lettered these things. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's a funny thing. Very cool. Um, these are basically what I would call fanzines because not only do they have these volume three conclusion stories they also have several like uh uh backups of varying quality of ninja, various ninja turtle related comics uh but what we care about is the uh is the uh original unofficial volume three conclusion the interesting thing is the way they go about um the the difference between this and the official one yeah is both significant and also not that different it's a very interesting read. Like, yeah. I recommend doing what we did, reading the official ending first that Gary and Frank did. And then when you go back and you read this, it's pretty wild. Like like you said, like the ways that it verges and the way that it, like, is the same, it's kind of crazy. Yeah, I, I will say that this is a bootleg and it was never for sale, so it's... would. You're not going to find it at a comic shop or anything like that. This is, cl- yeah, bed. exactly. It's it's pretty much digital only. I don't know if it ever actually got printed. Um, it might have been, but it's probably just among you know a small group of turtle fans. Yeah. So the major differences about this story and the main one, which there are many differences. I mean, like the way, but the, okay, let me start over again one more time. The purpose of this 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 fan conclusion is that, like, the purpose of it, I believe, is to bridge the gap between Volume Three and Volume Four because a For lot sure. of a lot of stuff that they reference in these issues ties into stuff that happened in Volume Four. See, th- these issues were made in 2011 and 2012, ten years after Volume Four had happened. Mm-hmm. So a lot of the stuff they reference is stuff that would not have happened yet if these had come out back in, like, 2000. Yeah. Right. So, um, like, the main thing, like, the way Donnie gets his armor taken away is completely different. Basically, yeah, his, Baxter Stockman. Yeah, yeah, his body rejects it, and he has to, like, uh, get help from Baxter Stockman, who is also a cyborg in a machine body. That is going way back to the original Mirage run where Baxter Stockman put his body in a machine. And, uh, basically, the Turtles defeated him, but Donnie found his disabled body and pinned it to a wall. So Baxter Stockman has been basically a brain in a, in a machine, uh, immobile for years. And that comes up in volume four, uh, where Donnie has basically been holding him hostage or not hostage, just, just prisoner this entire time. So this series uses that to resolve the, uh, nano machine plot. Right. Yeah. In a, in a somewhat similar way to how Dr. X does it in, in a, in a urban legends. Right. Although, uh, Stockman doesn't get to keep his cool armor because the nanites die pretty much as soon as he, uh, succeeds in saving Donnie. Uh, there was a much lengthier effort to explain, uh, the connection between shredder and, uh, like, was her name? Karai? Yeah. Like much lengthier. And it's uh, kind of cool. Not Karai, you mean lady shredder? Uh, Lady Shredder, right. Yeah, Lady Shredder is the, um, is, um, uh, Rokusaki's lover. Right. And so, well, not, yeah. yeah. Headhunter, dude. She is, yeah, she <laughs> is actually, yeah, she's, yeah, she's actually Headhunter, who, who in Urban Legends, Headhunter was just the mother of Pivotal. Right, right. Again, it's those weird parallels, right? It's like you're looking into a parallel dimension, with this. Yeah, so that Big Bang 10 they were actually really in love and not she's not trying to assassinate him, which is weird because they also kind of explain that that they tried they had to fake it or something like that, right? Yeah. Yeah. The, I will say that this fan-made 
issue on certain parts is very amateurish, like in terms of like the exposition that takes about 16 pages of comic to explain the relationship between Lady yeah. Shredder. They and also Oroko squeeze Saki. in a whole bunch of references, like the stuff with the uh, the re- the uh, the, worm, the worms, the worm clone the- of Orokusaki. That Which was, was like the what the New York like issue twenty of the Turtles I yeah. think but, yeah that was like a whole uh, back plot to line. New York, return to New York which is like an awesome three issue miniseries but yeah it's very fan fic in terms of trying to cram a bunch of stuff in and trying to over explain stuff like it Big just time. wouldn't work as a real like but published the, comic but the shorthand is that Lady Shredder is actually Pimico's mother right in right. this <laughs> yes and so. Which, again, is weird because it's, like, again, amateurish Trish, where it's kind of shoehorned in too much. Yeah. Like, out of nowhere. And where this mostly shakes out is Pimico is actually living with the turtles and training with the turtles. And Lady Shredder brings the foot to lay siege to the graveyard hideout. Right. And that's how the final conflict kind of happens. Oh, but we also get to find out what happened to Leatherhead after he got yeah. transported away, which is something we never get a result really resolved in the... In, and we in, really don't need it, but it what? is well. It's kind of funny. I, 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 like I laugh because it's like there are several things in here where it's just like Frank and uh, Gary's their run was just like meh. You know, well, well, it's all a, good. That is a perfect case of a fan fic that wants to Want like to tie everything tie, up. All loose yep. ends must be tied up, right? right? And it gets too cumbersome. It's too much when you start reading it. It's like I. You understand why, you know, as much as like a fan, you want to understand every aspect of everything and right. why something does, something, you know what I mean? It's like the Star Wars fans, you know, they, you have to go overboard and try to understand everything. There's a reason why, like, you know, the 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 real stuff isn't so overboard like that because it comes it becomes cumbersome. Yeah, right. And in, and in this story, uh, Chang actually uses his tether to Splinter to lead the foot to the turtles as opposed right. to Splinter. Uh, Chang and Splinter's body leading the turtles to the foot. Right. right. Uh, that's the, that, 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 yeah. So, um, yeah, the, 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 that's the end of basically the, uh, the first issue of this. Uh, Donnie, uh, the main thing is that Donnie gets his armor, like, stripped off by Baxter Stockman, and you're supposed to think, oh no, Baxter Stockman has got his body back, and that is not how it's going to shake out. Um, but yeah, it start it uh the next issue kicks off basically with uh Donnie getting basically we get an explanation for the healing factor thing that cropped up in Urban Legends. Right. It's ba- yeah. Ba- yeah. It's basically it's a reptilian DNA coupled with a mutagen. And also it also ties into the fact that they're still young and growing. Apparently this is something that's going to wear off, which it, which is a again, a fan fiction way of explaining why this doesn't continue in later series when they're much older. Right, right. Something that really doesn't need to be explained. Uh, so yeah, um, I know we're going we're going a little bit too beat by beat on this because I really wanted to focus yeah. on what's different. But right, what, right, right. What, what really what really boils down to it is it, it does deviate significantly here. We get we get a we get a foot versus turtles fight, and we get Pimico versus uh, um, oh, what's her name, uh, Lady Shredder, right. And they, yeah, and we also get a, we also get guest appearances by uh, mutant worm shredders. Yeah, dude, right. that was when I was like weird. from issue twenty one. Yeah, I was, I was like, uh, okay, <laughs> too much, too much going on here, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, a bridge too far. Oh, and King Komodo comes back too, and yeah, he's right, yeah. on the turtle side, so he starts yep. ripping the shit out of shredders. Uh. Yeah, sorry, I'm flipping through trying to find what's relevant. So yeah, Lady Shredder and um and Pimico fight and it becomes this whole big tragedy where they both accidentally, well, they don't accidentally, but they both kill each other before right. of course finding out that uh who they that their their mother and daughter and also that uh Lady Shredder's whole revenge plot is a lie because of course Orokosaki killed Amato Yoshi's wife and Amato Yoshi and because uh, cause Orokosaki was jealous, and so she's been fighting for the memory of basically an asshole. <laughs> right. As you do. And in the end, uh, basically, everybody dies yeah. in violent fashion. Every- everyone except the turtles. Um, 
But we and also Karai. find it. We Karai also doesn't die. Uh, well, Karai never really shows up. Uh, that's true. She's yeah, not in she this story. She shows up right at the very end. Yeah, right yeah, at the yeah. very, very end. She, she's out not, of nowhere. <laughs> she's not really tied into the story because the whole thing with her daughter isn't the part of the story. Right, right, right. right. Um, what does happen, though, is we, we do get told, oh, Raphael had feel had um, uh, uh, romantic feelings for Pimico, though. Right. And, and we, I'm like, well, okay. <laughs> and we learn this because he starts crying with two eyes. Right. Because yep. his eye has grown back. Yep. Because their turtles are just healing up left and right in this. Yep. He whips off the bandana and he's got two crying eyes. I'm like, oh. That's kind of a cool little touch. I was like, I, yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, that's pretty good. And again, it's like Gary. It was funny. Is, dude, Gary's definitely aware of this as he writes that. Because like the final splash page with the bandana off it's like, you know what? Nice little nod. Bandana off. And yes, we do get a we do get one scene with Karai who's basically going back to Japan to take over. Right. Or uh or rather I guess she's in New York to take over because now the, the slate's been wiped clean. Yep. Of course then we find out Mikey also had like oh no, we find out that Leo had romantic feelings for a human as well, so it's kind of a funny joke between him and Raph because they're having a like a personal brother moment. Yeah, I will say I love the dialogue about not not usually getting sprung for humans. It just kind of yeah. cracks me up. That's kind of funny, actually. Um, you know something that this uh, fanfic did? Uh, fanfic? How insulting! You know something that this uh, fan comic did? I didn't pick up on that a rose among thorns was a Horridus reference. That makes sense. I feel yeah. so stupid. Yeah, I didn't catch that either. But the thing is, that, well, this story makes it pretty clear is that he, Mikey wrote the book because he met Sarah and basically right. fell for her and wrote, and the, book for, wrote the book for her. But as we all know, Sarah is a giant flirt and, fl- and a flake. Right. And so it doesn't really like, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? She doesn't really like uh, reciprocate the f- same feelings. And in right. fact, just, just tells Mikey straight up, oh, I'm, I'm living with Dragon now. Yeah. And he's like, God damn it. Yeah. And like, I think he likes me. And she just leaves. See ya. And then Mikey's so pissed, he destroys his typewriter. Yeah. His music is gone. Which is probably just the author's way of, they like wrote Horridus out and stuff. Yeah, I mean, but it's, I do, it's, it's more. And then stop Mikey's writing career. Yeah, and stopped his. I, I was like, but I will say that, like I said, without this. I didn't draw the connection between Mikey writing a love novel because he was in love. Right. And yeah, it's so obvious. Either. Once you look back at it, it's like, oh, man. And again, um, I know this sounds That's funny, a nice touch. Yeah, I want to just give Gary props because, again, it's like, dude, Gary's underrated as shit. And it's like, dude, that stuff was there. I just didn't pick up on it. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Uh, it's cool. It's good. This this, this ties film, in the series around to around Savage right, Dragon right. Seven. And then, and then, and then it kind of ends with one final beat where uh, Leatherhead shows. Well, well, two final beats actually. Leatherhead shows up to send Mister X back to the U- Utah homeworld by right. a teleporter. But we also get a resolution to the whole uh, what's his face mafia guy plot. Right. right. Remember yeah. him? He had that one last yeah. scene where he was going to go after his uh, his daughter one more time. And right. that is one thing I did think it was funny that they completely ignored in the last three issues. Yeah, they didn't have time to deal with this guy, but this issue does, where basically he just yeah. gets absolutely murdered by the foot. Karai's right. Foot, as, like, a <laughs> part of, like, her first, like, move to take over New York. Yeah. And just kill this, this guy. Resolve this plot. Yeah. Just tie that thread up. <laughs> uh, but then, oh, here's the ultimate. This is the ultimate. Dude, I would love to know the story about this splash page and the similarities it has to the actual final Well, it's issue. identical. Right. I'm That's pretty I'm sure. Not Foster- told, like, he redrew the backgrounds and stuff, like, made them better. Yeah, like yeah. The- but I think this is based, this is a Fosco page. I'm pretty sure this is his pencils. Yeah, it is. And it's been it inked is. over. Yep. Okay, so they inked over. So this is cool because this is how Frank always envisioned the end of the series. Yeah. Yeah cool man that's cool and it is kind of interesting because the the major like you said you redo some of the backgrounds and also don uh don Tello doesn't have a doesn't have a metal shell in this right and i think the cat yeah. was drawn differently i think it was uh, he may have redrawn the whole thing but it is pretty much identical it's a big callback it's crazy me. that it is identical but again this is tying it into volume four with where it starts at the farm they're gonna go live on the farm for a few years get out of the city I have to. That's what unless, I'm saying. Is unless Fosco d- 
didn't draw it and is just doing a wink wink to you know to the well, guys that I'm pretty sure the credits show that he drew this page this is what 45 yeah. 48 and that's page yeah, 48 and 49. Yeah, so he, the inks are so heavy on top. Oh, of yeah. Whoever's inking this is blowing anything. it up. Well, if I may, uh, can I just say that I felt after reading this and then rereading, I actually read this, then went back and read again the final three issues. Guys, I have to think that Gary and Frank are super aware of this and we're throwing out little nods, little ones. Like when the turtles go in, to see the tubes, the test tubes, like yep. just tons of them. Uh, you know, the one turtle's like, oh, dude, Baxter Stockman would love this. And uh, I'm like, yeah. felt like a little bit of a well, nod. They, they definitely were involved in these two issues. Uh, Gary wrote, like, notes for one of them. Right. About the series. I, I, and obviously it says that he, he's... I mean, here's, here's my theory. I, I haven't spoken to Gary. I haven't checked anything. What I think probably happened was... The Turtles fan community probably got Gary's like uh, notes for like yeah, what his plan, what his plans for the series were, and they based this off of that, right? Which is why yeah, some of the beats yeah. are similar, and but some of the stuff isn't. Right. Thinking there's no way in hell they'll ever get to close it out, right? Right, right. And then the guys, f- what the fuck is this Archimedes thing? I don't know what I'm. Oh yeah, at. that that's not that that is not uh, that is a pinup. That is not part of the story. It's just in an okay. awkward place. But the 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 page before it with the Utam homeworld, the Utam right. homeworld, this mm-hmm. whole page using Mister Doctor X to uh, basically be the guy to talk about Earth to the con mm-hmm. the council is mm-hmm. like crucial to like how the first series starts. I mean, sorry, uh, Volume Four starts because one of the major plot points of that series is that. The Utroms make first contact with Earth and open up travel to the galaxy with them. That's right. Uh, you said that. That's right. So this is this is this this is, again is another case of it's like an epilogue for that. This is another case of a fan trying to like dovetail all of this together, trying to sew it together. This, yep. this, okay. Yeah, using this Doctor X to make that connection. Okay. Cool. That. It's kind of cool, but also I get why you don't really need it, but also kind of cool. Yeah. <laughs> That's probably one of the cooler, like, additional things. And then and then we get this really fucking sick Jim Lawson pinup with Lady Shredder and Pimico fighting. Agreed, yeah. dude. Yeah. Agreed. Holy I also cow. think the Fosco pinup right after that is also sick. Yeah. Also agreed. <laughs> Which I think would have been a nice cover on the IDW series. Yeah. If you kind of look at what's going on in the inking, it's a little hard to tell in black and white unless you look. They're like in spotlight, yeah. and so they're coming. In, they're like coming at you into a spotlight. Oh, it's so cool, dude! But it, it, it is nice, like like you guys are saying, to see Jim Lawson draw Pimico and see another art. Like his, I don't know, his style is so cool. I've always really I've been a fan of his cartoony, since I was but... reading Volume Four. He's got such a unique style; it's just so indie. I love it. It's so angular. Yeah. yeah. And, it, yes. he, and he does these crazy things with, like, ink washes and, like, hatchings. And it's, it's just so unique. Yeah, it's, man. It's this very really cartoony, is... like, a, a animation almost looks like, you know. Yeah, Bruce Timmish, but not. Yeah. So that's it. That's Ninja Turtles. That is all it's she wrote. We, we <laughs> did it all. Wow. Holy shit, guys. Can I just say, like, um, it was a joy and a pleasure. Uh, the extra like ingredients that you guys threw on this pizza of the big bang uh number 10 uh the two fan comics to me as a reader a first time reader like that shit is stuff that i never would have come across on my own never and so i really appreciate you guys bringing that to the table because it's super enriched and made this whole reading thing like yeah an 11 I want to say um, for listeners, if you can't find this fan made comic, send us an email or PM us or find us on the internet somehow. Google and it. I'll send you a link if you can't find it. Very cool, though. I mean, holy shit, dudes. Like, what a great ride. And honestly, uh, this is a series that I really enjoyed and I fucking love this rereading. Or I love this reading of it. And, uh, all the little extra insights and nudge nudge and wink winks and just shit that you guys uh, showed me that I never would have found on my own. So thank you, dudes. I super appreciate it. So yeah, it was it was fun. 
yeah, it's, it's just great to read another, like, not if not a Larson pen series, but a Larson adjacent series. It's just, just kind of cool to have. Yeah, it's just a nice thing. I think it, any Savage Dragon fan would appreciate this. It's unique. You don't see that much either, this kind of comic either. So we're getting a chance to play, you know, read about the turtles, but yet at the same time, it's in the Savage Dragon universe. Like, what other examples are there of that kind of deal? You know what I mean? Where you're you're getting a, a tried and true kind of series seen through another set of eyes, you know? Yeah. I honestly um, can't think property of property like that. It's it's fun. Such a unique situation. Right. Uh-huh. Um so I guess we should start thinking about next time. Uh astute listeners may have noticed that this is episode ninety nine. And as we all know, after ninety nine comes episode one hundred. <laughs> uh so we've got plans to make is- episode one hundred kind of a special deal. We probably will not be reviewing any issues on it. Uh, instead, we're probably going to be reviewing ourselves, if you Ooh. will. Uh, we'll be talking. I ab- give myself an A plus, uh, C minus <laughs> at best. <laughs> I mean, I'm a solid like B and a half. Yeah, I think you're pushing it a little bit, but <sighs> B. But we are planning to have some special guests, uh, ghosts. What I would say, um, ghosts of Fincast past from the future. <laughs> huh? The host ghosts, the host the ghosts of Fincast lore. But uh, that is for next time, and then of course we'll be back for episode one hundred and one, where we will of course be reviewing Savage Dragon two fifty three. Oh yeah! Ooh, those meat and potatoes! I can taste them already. And then hopefully we'll get back into the groove doing more retro reviews. Now that these turtle episodes are out of the way, we'll be able to do fit in a lot more retro reviews going forward. Yeah, I want we'll, to get we're gonna to... get into fucking Freak Force. Get that, yes. get that into that. Yeah. I'm stoked for Freak Force. I think that for you guys, like I know, I don't know. I think you were saying that you hadn't read them, or it's I been a not. while. I think it's going to be like another turtles. Yeah, like I think yeah. it's going to be fun. I think I haven't read them forever. It's got to be over ten years. And so I'm looking forward to it. I, there's a lot of things that connect with Dragon, of course, and, and things going on during that time. There's a lot of uh, uh, interaction with the other parts of the Image Universe, I think. Mm-hmm. Uh, I know Cyber Force shows up. Um, so it's it's going to be fun. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. There's a lot of stuff that was covered in Freak Force uh, that's important to Savage Dragon that wasn't in Savage Dragon just because of how much you know story there was you know so. I'm, I'm really interested to figure out what the deal is with dr navranya yeah because, yeah um, yeah that's true they flesh out a lot in freak force that's yeah. not really covered in savage dragon and there's a name that you guys mentioned like have been mentioning over the years savannah that, dr savannah if it's freak force exclusive character and i don't know him and i can't wait to learn him oh joey yeah. oh yeah joey joey's joey's, joey's oh, right, right joey's pretty yeah. great Yep, don't know him. Don't know him at all. Still, we get much more create Johnny Redbeard and creator backstory. Uh, I stuff. mean, you've met Joey. He's been in a couple of backups at this point. I mean, but Jim, it's kind of like seeing the uh, Doctor X in the Seven Pages. It's like yeah. I I recognize that this is a thing, but it's not ringing true. Yeah, yeah. Fair yeah. enough. So I can't wait. I'm excited as shit, dude. Fincast, man, listen. We got, I mean, I know I'm jumping the gun a little bit, but we got so much good shit coming down the pipes. Holy cow. Absolutely. I agree. Yep. I agree. We, we're Definitely. just getting started. Yeah. We're, mm, I'm, I'm just getting real hundredy here. I was about to say, who would have thought that they could keep it going on one comic so long? I know, <laughs> right? <laughs> ne- next month, when, 100, when our 100th episode drops, and it's 100 of our regular casts if you count oh, all yeah. of our we, retro and little things we're way, we're over that but uh also uh next month in november because it's october now uh we hit nine years doing this so which seems crazy to me you know it might be time doesn't to get, feel that long might be time to finally get that fan cast tattoo uh, i'm good thanks. you don't got one uh-oh <laughs> i hate tattoos mm. i hate them i hate them raven tra- i hate them it, it, even tramp stamps? We are now down to two listeners. I especially I hate tramp stamps. 
<laughs> he hates tramp stamps the most. <laughs> I, not the most, just the most. More than face tattoos or less? Oh, face tattoos. Face tattoos are at least <laughs> ironically funny. Uh, uh, it's... Uh, I don't know. You gotta... Mm, like that guy it, who did like all the leopard spots on his head. It takes a lot to make a face tattoo awesome. I don't know why. I love tattoos, but... It just looks like someone scribbled on your face while you were sleeping. Not to lo- yeah. not to be not to be too serious about this, but honestly, all tattoos look like someone just scribbled on you. They, they look like bruises. Mm-mm. I hate them. Mm-mm. Oh, well, that's a bad take. Savage yeah. bad take. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all right, we're gonna move on. <laughs> yep, we're done. We're in the weeds, guys. Listen, thank you so much for talking turtles with me. It has really been a joy. I really appreciate it. Good time, man. I'm just sad it's done. Maybe yeah, we'll get too. something more down the line, but who knows? Uh, uh, Gary, Frank, Adam. Uh, I think we Ge- all of them. Like, yep. thank you guys for turtles. Like, it was a fucking great ride. I think we should end on that note. Yep. yep. Thanks for listening, everyone. Thank you. See you next time. Ninja Turtles, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. <laughs>